Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly the Reverend Daniel O. Waters, Associate Pastor of Bethel AME Church, loving cousin and friend, Nancy D. Bisignani, beloved wife, mother of Judge Margaret Bisignani Moyle, grandmother, sister, and former president and member of the Architectural Heritage Association. Mary Louise Mayer, devoted wife, mother of Scranton policeman Michael Mayer, and Scranton school director Kathleen McGuigan, grandmother and aunt, and their dear families and many friends who suffer their loss. Also, please remember in your prayers Mrs. Santoli, wife of Tony Santoli, who suffered a stroke. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lascom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, Tax Assessor's Report, Final Report from Hearing Date, October 31st, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Minutes of the regular meeting of the Scranton Housing Authority held on November 5th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held November 14th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Yes, I have one. Just pardon me one second. Um, Giovanni Piccolino, um, owner of Buona Pizza, sent a message. He's having a free Christmas lunch at Buona Pizza from 11 to 2. Um, he will also be delivering meals to any elderly who cannot make it or somebody who isn't mobile. Um, they could contact Giovanni at 342-4032. They could call on Christmas Day or ahead of time. Everything is free of charge. Thank you. Scranton City Council will not meet on Thursday, December 27, 2012. However, if there should be agenda items submitted by the mayor to be addressed as an emergency, a meeting will be conducted on December 20, 2012. Tomorrow at Hershey Park Stadium, the Dunmore Bucks will play defending state champion Clareton for the PIAA Class A State Championship. We wish them the best of luck and a victory in tomorrow's game. Also, on behalf of Scranton City Council, I'd like to wish everyone a very blessed and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Joyous Kwanzaa, and a very healthy, happy, and prosperous New Year. And speaking of the holidays, City Council has some special guests tonight, but I think they're much too slim and clean-shaven to be mistaken for Santa. Uh, and so we welcome Mayor Doherty and Business Administrator Ryan McGowan to our chambers once again to address City Council and the people of Scranton. Mayor? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Evans. Uh, if I may, I'm going to approach and hand you Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Mrs. Evans, I, I come tonight to ask this council uh, to consider amending the mayor's 2013 operating budget uh, to increase the property taxes from 12% uh, to 22%. It would be a 10% increase. The 10% increase would be in order to comply with Judge O'Brien's uh, ruling that allows, had allowed the city to go out for its second unfunded debt and have a dedicated millage towards that. I would like to, first of all, congratulate Council on, on their hard work as we put that second unfunded debt together. The initial ruling had thought it was going to be 12% uh, through the hard work of really Mr. Joyce and uh, Mr. McGowan over the last couple of days, they've been able to get it down to 10%. Uh, these are very challenging times for the city, but I have to thank this council for the great work you've done over the last several months. Uh, we've been able to achieve our two unfunded debts. We've been able to achieve a TAN uh, for next year and put the city on good, solid base. But I think it is important, and that's why I come before you tonight, to humbly ask that you consider instituting this because it was the judge's ruling. And I think, as a governing body, we should abide by the judge's ruling. We've done so much to solidify our base. And as we do remember, our, our role here is always to protect the assets of the people who live in our city. And primarily that is in our homes. And I think back over the last uh, year and I look at all of you and all the help that you've given to us um, Mr. Loscombe, I think of the two weeks you and I spent uh, at the University of Scranton as we negotiated long-term contracts for our public safety unions which has brought uh, tremendous savings for us in the future but really has given us stability as we look towards the future and we look to borrow and run the city's budget giving us that base has been a tremendous help to us it would not have come about without your help. Being a fireman, uh, you had the ability, but also you had the knowledge to reach across the table as you were bargaining on behalf of the city, but understanding how can we come to a deal. It really wouldn't have happened, Jack, without your, your great help. And I want to thank you for that because it has made a difference. And not only does it make a difference at that point in time as we were able to bring labor peace, but that, those agreements resonate through all our discussions. Mr. McGowan and I have spent a lot of time, as has Mr. Joyce, dealing with financial organizations. And one of the things they ask us is, how have you been able to put this contract together? And I talk about all the great work you did and the help you gave us. But they're very pleased as they look at our finances and say, now I know what your costs are for the next five years. And that came about from your hard work. I want to thank you because you know, <clears throat> oftentimes we make decisions and then we go on. But now as we have the opportunity to look back and see the benefit of that hard work, it has made a difference. And, and you know, as, you, as council people, you're temporary, you're not temporary employees, but you're part-time employees. You have lives. You all work and do other things and, and we don't run in, into each other just to really take the moment and say, thanks, I really appreciate what you've done not only for the administration, but for the people of our city. You know, it's a type of thing that most people don't recognize. But I recognize because I know how difficult it is to get these deals done. It doesn't happen unless we have a long-term contract and agreement with the bargaining units. And I can say, as the person who was in that room, it wouldn't have happened without your help. So thank you very much. And to Mr. Joyce, um, all the time we've spent together over the last six months, your work with Mr. McGowan, uh, I can't thank you enough. I mean, a lot of tough decisions and a lot of hard work, even today, even yesterday, even over the weekend, the amount of phone calls and emails and your willingness to keep pushing. How can we save more? How can we lessen this burden? And the truth is, it's through your hard work and the savings that you've been searching for that allowed us to get a better interest rate. When we went into the market, when Janie Montgomery went out, they get, had given us an idea that it was going to be a lot higher. But from the hard work that you and Mr. McGowan and, and the rest of this council has done, it made a difference. You saved us money, which means that savings then goes to the taxpayers. That's a direct reflection from your hard work. And again, just as I said, Mr. Delasco, oftentimes we don't get the chance to say thank you but you've done a great job, and I do say thank you. And the same thank is true with Mr. Much. Rogan and Mr. McGough. 
<coughs> we don't live in a vacuum. All your suggestions, all your commitments, all your willingness to say, hey, maybe we can do it differently. It does resonate with us. And it may not resonate, it may not come to fruition tonight, but trust me, it will in the future. There will be things that will happen that will come from suggestions you've made that made us think, you know what, we should look at this differently. Bobby, you spend a tremendous amount of time going to the panel meetings. You uh, spent this week at the court hearings. You take time out of your own private life to dedicate you know, your service to the people of our city. And for Ryan and I, we're here every day. So we just keep working and moving and, and, and figuring out how we get these things done. But it doesn't happen without your help. And lastly, Mrs. Evans, without your leadership, we wouldn't have been able to get to this point. If we look back to where we were in the summertime and how close we were to going over the cliff, um, we came together. All of us look at life differently in terms of politics and how we want to govern. But we put all that aside so that we can take care of the people that we represent, the people of the city, the city that we love. But that only comes about from your leadership. And uh, you know, I can attest because you and I speak regularly, every day. And we don't agree all the time, but we agree on one thing. We have to make sure we supply the best foundation for our city. And that's what leadership's about. And I just want to say to all of you, thank you, because we have come together over a difficult time. A lot of people have challenged us and said, I don't know if you'll get this borrowing. I don't know if you'll get to that borrowing. But I know when I sit with the people from Nuveen who flew in from Chicago two weeks ago, and we had to meet with them. And they met with Frank and met with Ryan. And they posed these questions to us. How are you able to come to this resolution? I said, because everybody on city council and in this city, we want it to work. Because we understand our obligation to the city we love and the people we represent. Not just about today, but about a year from now, and five years from now, and ten years from now. We are a great city. We have the lowest crime in northeastern Pennsylvania and probably in the whole state. We have economic development taking place all the time. You can't just walk out the front of this building and you, you see our latest example of that, the Chamber of Commerce building. That's our eighth building in which apartments have been constructed and renovated in our downtown. No other city in the state has that. We're headed in the right direction. Next year, well over $125 million will be spent on construction. But we have financial challenges. And those challenges have to be met by us, the leaders. And it wouldn't have happened without you. I want to say thank you, because this is a shared government. We all have roles. And without the council's help, leadership, sacrifice of your own personal time, you all have lives, yet you give of your time to meet at 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, Mr. McGowan and I are full time, but you have decided to give. During this critical time in our city's history, when we are poised to keep growing, we have decided that we are willing to invest in ourselves, that we are worth the investment. This city is worth the investment. And it doesn't happen without the five people on this council. So I want to make sure that you know how much I appreciate what you've done. These are not easy decisions. But I can tell you, they have been the decisions that have allowed us to move forward. And I think going forward, that we are poised for even better things. So I just want to say thank you very much and really just to offer you happy holidays. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you. Uh, I agree that this has been arguably the most perilous year in the city of Scranton's history. And I thank you for your willingness to work with this council and myself to make sure the city got through. And uh, I think because of this tremendous joint effort among yourself, your administration, this council, both solicitors, our city clerk, our staff, uh, we've been successful in avoiding bankruptcy. Right. And uh, I do thank you for setting aside your differences yeah. with me and your willingness to work with me and with everyone on this council for the betterment of, of our people and the survival of our city. And I think you're right that 
as we're moving forward, we're beginning the process now of placing the city back onto sound financial footing. Well, and you have my commitment in 2013. We will continue this and we will grow even better. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, just one question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the uh, amendment that you're proposing for the additional 10%, and I understand what you're saying, it is to comply with Judge O'Brien's decision for the second unfunded debt. And uh, I know that the city has made its 2013 payment already. And as a result, we had hoped that the court-ordered tax increase wouldn't have occurred until 2014. Right. And uh, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, it's paid for right. next year. But on the other hand, I know uh, that there were many questions concerning this particular issue during um, the court case. And uh, do you feel that this can strengthen the city's position in that we are respecting the judge's decision and we are proving to them that the city does intend to make Yeah, I payments. believe so. And, and I think you, you hit on a perfect point, which is people watch what we're doing and all the time and are we following what we said we were going to do and are we honoring a judge's decision? And I think that's important that we do that. Uh, it shows respect for the court and it also lays the foundation, takes out doubt, where people say, did you pass that? Yes, yes we have, we've done it. That's beyond us. So many times as we've gotten through, as we've gone for our first unfunded debt and our second unfunded debt, which became easier to get, it is because we were able, we were able to hit all these landmarks and get past them. And people said, you know, in the financial community, you're doing what you said you were gonna do. And that's what his leadership's about as, as we lead this city. Um, but it also removes the mystery. And uh, we need to show that. As we go to ask the court for help uh, during these tough times, we want to show that we're doing everything we're supposed to do. And we'll continue to do more. We know that we are uh, asking for help. And, and we're very mindful and respectful of that. Um, and we're very appreciative of it. We don't take these... Uh, make these decisions lightly or ask make these requests lightly we understand that these are sacrifices for everyone and we're asking people to come together in this time of need but I do think this uh, is the right thing to do because it shows that we honor the court's decision and we are respectful of the court and in addition to that um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago the increase was scheduled for 2014 right. and beyond. And uh, if it is moved now into 2013, will that decrease the tax increase that was forthcoming for 2014? I think we definitely have the opportunity for that because we have a whole 12 months to work towards that. And uh, as we've proven over this last year, we've been very resourceful and very dedicated through the cooperation. And that is my hope, that is my goal, is what I'm gonna push for. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Evans, and thank you to everyone, and I wish you all happy holidays. And, and you, you, you as well, thank you both for coming in this evening. Mrs. Craig. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Yeah, hello, Council. Good evening. Um, being first doesn't do me any favor, I guess. You know, we, we've had 25 years of Pell, and where are we? They, it seems like their policies are, is nothing more than raise taxes and, and borrow. Um, 
in the paper this week, it, it, he's asking for a raise for Miss McAndrews. He's supposed to be protecting us from these things. This, to me, Pell was destroying the city. Many years ago, probably in the same room, there was a very wise man named Charles Luger. I, I don't know how many of y'all knew him politically. But his solution to the, to the problems of the city then was consolidate. Consolidate the city and the county, the fire and the police, all the little towns around here. Just consolidate. See, see, all these years, Pell has never even come up with a suggestion that's a minute bit of, of that good. Uh, from what I gather, Mr. Mr. Luger thought to oversee this this large amount to use the sheriff's office because they were the least politically corruptible at the time. You know, the Catholic Church had to consolidate. It made a lot of people mad, but it saved them. The, the, all car, car companies consolidated, the Boy Scouts. It's, it's something to consider, especially when, when we're on our last leg. But taxing, taxing these 20,000 people that come and go every day, that's, that's not, a, that's not a, good, a good thing. I've talked to so many of them. I don't think anybody would quit their job and, and, and go someplace else, but it, it's an unfavorable situation. I, I was talking to, to Bobby before, Mr. Sheridan. I mentioned, I, I've said it up here, if you want to know what's happening in this city, I, I have a, a taxi driver, cab driver I talk to. He tells me things that are never on television or in the paper. I was talking to a UPS man a few days ago. He told me things are slower than last year. These people are, have, have a, they're on it. They know what's happening. I stopped at a garage. Uh, uh, to ask if I could park my car there for a while when I went to the library. And they were telling me they rent more trucks and equipment that leaves town than comes in. See, these things ought to tell people something, what's going on here. I'm going to leave you real quick, but I want to tell you a real quick little story that uh, this relates to the city. Many years ago, I was sitting with Elvis at MGM, they had what they called the three-cornered church, and we'd drink it, chocolate milk used to come in little bottles then. And we were talking about a dear friend from Memphis that came and visited, named uh, Dewey Phillips. He was, in the 40s and 50s, a successful DJ in Memphis. His brother, Sam Phillips, that owned Sun Records, and Dewey, this would just take a second. Dewey had this old white double-breasted suit and, and white shoes like uh, Pat Boone wears. And he had these expressions from 30 years before. He, he, he was sponsored by Falstaff Beer. And he used to say, open up a rib and pour it in and get a wheelbarrow and push it. He had all these, see, the, the world had passed Dewey by. He was, he was, 20 and 30 years behind. The world has passed Scranton by. We're a hundred years behind. We're not a modern city. You can't, you can't have this influx of business and people and everything like, like we desire being so far behind. Let, let me just, Elvis said, talking about Dewey, he said every once in a while you have to stop 
And, and just take, take account of, of where you are in life and make that next little step up on the, on the ladder. See, Dewey didn't do that. The city's not doing it. All that's happening is the indifference of Pell to the people of this city is destroying it. They're not helping us one bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Thank you. Sheridan. Good evening, uh, lady and gentlemen of the council. I Good wanted evening. to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight to you on behalf of the Council of Towers, of 15 towers in the city of Scranton, but not only them, but the 85 families that we employ in the city of Scranton. Council, I'm here tonight to talk on the storage that you, facility that you're about to put in behind the Scranton Police Department. First of all, we're placing this facility behind the Scranton Police Department, which is a gorgeous facility that we build. And I was a police officer in the city, so I know and I've worked in the city. My name bears on the memorial that's in, play in front of that school as a part of the council that protects this building and has the memorial for the police department. First of all, I want to talk about the facility that you're putting in place. Building that you're, the, the uh, building that you're putting in place and the lot that you want to be in place, we need to talk about the cost, okay? Someone last week said that we have a fence, we can put the cars behind this area. Well, first of all, we need to look at the facility, the building that you have to build because you have homicide vehicles, you have drug vehicles, and you have all kinds of DUI vehicles that, that were involved in, in serious bodily injury that has to be stored and sealed off while our detective bureau goes in these buildings and, and processes them. So that's going to be a costly building. Then you have to look at what the cost is to maintain this lot because you're going to have to maintain it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because we're going to be bringing the vehicles into you and at the gate, it's then your, the city is going to take the responsibility of putting it in, in your facilities, which is going to take in tow trucks. You're going to have personnel, because our insurance does not regulate us going into the yard and parking the vehicles in place and, and, and putting it in between other, any other car. You're going to have to have personnel there to mandate this. I've talked to several unions. They're not ready to, to change the description of working. You're going to have to deal with the personal items in these cars. So you're going to have to have another facility that you're going to have to store the inventory. You're going to have personnel going into cars that were in serious accidents with a lot of sharp edges on them. We've been trained. We've gone through classes and been trained with this. You have to have tow trucks, which is going to cost a lot of money. You're going to have to have infrared cameras to protect this. You're going to have to have liability insurance that's going to have to protect the personal property in the car and the vehicle at all times. And then let's talk about the National Historic Park that you're putting this behind. What are we going to say when we take our grandchildren into for a train ride and the first thing we see as we drive out in the train to take the ride and we see a junkyard because that's where we're going to have we're going to be storing a lot of cars. What are we going to tell our children and our grandchildren when we take them out in the walkway over the mall and we look down at a junkyard? Is that what we're going to have? Now you say that you want all vehicles towed into the city of Scranton. Let's look at the cost factor of the numbers that were inputted in the budget. You didn't take in consideration of all the vehicles, the request outside of the towing list that are asked to have a request for a special towing company to come in, tow that vehicle to ABC Body Shop. That's not going to come into your facility, so you cannot put that in your number. How about the number of tows that we get as businessmen 
from our cousins, our aunts, our sisters, our brothers, our, our customers that get in an accident and request our, our services. They're not going to be coming into your facilities. How about the massive amount of AAA requested for accidents throughout that you have placed in your numbers that are not going to come to your facility? This all comes off the cost of the initial investment that you have placed in your budget. And put the storage in that we get overall from that it does not come anywhere near your number you have injected into your budget tonight. Now let's talk about you asked to have all of the storage or all the vehicles towed to the city of Scranton. And I'd ask, I'm ask, talking on behalf of 15 people, uh, Council, and 15 people can come up here for three minutes, but we've chosen not to. They have one representative to come up. So I appreciate that we get all our, our comments across that we can, okay? Another minute or two. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You've asked to have the heavy duties towing brought into your facility. Well, when you sat down and planned out this, did you take into account that on the north side you have a low bridge? On the south side of South Washington Avenue, you have a, a low bridge. You cannot bring your, your heavy duty wrecks into this, this facility. You can't get them in there. Let's take in account for the wrecks, say a tractor trailer that tips over and rolls over on the expressway that has a thousand turkeys in it. Insurance regulations regulate that you have to have the cargo with the storage in the storage area where it's gonna be stored. You're going to have a thousand turkeys running around City Hall. That's going to look great. <laughs> we're, what we're saying is we have a hundred families involved here. We've serviced the city well. Anything the city came to us on, we've been more than well to step up to the plate. If it was for fireworks or any contribution to the K-9, we've been there. We stepped up. We put thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars into our facilities to be ready to take care of and make sure the people were safe in the city of Scranton when there was an accident on the highway, that the lanes are open, that we get there. We get, we get there quick, and we clean the streets up quick, and we clean up all that has to be cleaned up. Where I'm asking you tonight, when you take all this into consideration, your numbers do not match, Council. Your numbers do not match. It doesn't account. It's going to take a massive amount of money to build the facility that you need to build to accommodate the personnel, the equipment, the facilities that have to be put together to run this right. You have to have it manned 24 hours. We do. We're ready. We're ready to go at any time. We're willing to step up to the plate and sit down with Consul and work out an agreement that fills in the budget that makes it all. Because we're taxpayers. We own homes. We own businesses. We have families. I'm a Scranton School Board Director. I have a big interest in this, in this city. I'm asking you tonight, when you look, please take the facts in hand here. Look what you need to do. Look at the, the amount of money we have to come up to put this facility together. And then look these, not 15 families, but 100 families in the face and look at them when you make your decision and make a correct decision. We are 15 businesses paying occupational tax, mercantile tax, business privilege tax, workman's compensation in the city to do what we have to do. And I feel we do a good job for you, the city, and please consider us. Consider all the facts here when we, when we make our vote tonight. Council, thank you very much for having us, and thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Rowland. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me, having me this evening. Uh, Council, my name is Ken Rowland. Uh, I'm a citizen and a taxpayer in the city of Scranton. Uh, I'm also an employee of a local towing company that Mr. Sheridan was talking about. I'm one of the 100 families. Uh, that will be tremendously affected uh, if this new budget is passing, passing into effect on the storage taken away from us. I don't think the, all the members of council realize that taking even a part of the storage contracts away from small business not only hurts the owners, but also has a negative in, impact on the employees like myself and many others. 
<clears throat> which most, most of us are tax, tax paying citizens of the city. <clears throat> I think I could say on behalf of all the towing company drivers, we take pride in, our, in working with uh, Scranton Fire and Police Departments, making ourselves available any, at any given time, day or night, to help out in any way we can. Uh, be it in an accident scene or help out with an evidence car. Uh, I know personally, myself, I'm called out all hours of the night. Uh, if our other driver's on, on a different call, I'll get a call. I live two blocks away from my garage. I'm down there. I'm on scene. Uh, Scranton Police and Scranton Fire Department are the main priority of our business. We make sure of that. <clears throat> uh, if you don't understand how, how it works in small businesses, the more money that an employee can make or make the owner, the better the owner can pay the employee, which in turn the employee can pay more in taxes to the city. So there's another benefit of it, you know. Uh, you know, all I can really say is that by taking away from the small businesses, like Mr. Sheridan said, you're not just hurting them businesses, you're hurting the average taxpayer like myself. I struggle to pay my bills, you know, but I do pay them and I make sure my taxes are paid. I make sure my child support's paid. I make sure everything's paid. And the only way I can do that is by having a good working relationship with, my, with the owner of my company, which I've worked for major corporations. I worked at Procter & Gamble fresh out of high school for almost 10 years, right? I made a lot of money. I make half the money I, I made there, but I'm happier because of the service work I do. And I take pride in it, and I know every driver out there does. So in closing, I'm asking, uh, please don't take the contracts away from the company. Work with us, like, or work with the owners. I'm sure they're good people. I know most of them. And, you know, if you, if you do take something away from us, or if you take something away from them, you are taking away from us. And uh, you're taking away from the, hard, the hardworking taxpayers of the city. They're the ones you're hurting the most. You're not hurting the owners the most. You're hurting the taxpaying workers, the employees. I hope you understand that. And Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Evans, you said have a prosperous New Year's. If this budget is passed and this is taken away from us, it's going to be very, very hard for us to have a prosperous New Year. And uh, I, bless, I, I bless all you guys. God bless for the work you do. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Miller? No, we, we can't. I'm sorry. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good, Good evening. evening. Let me begin uh, by just going back to some statements I made last week. Um, I'd like to just take this time for a few moments just to apologize. Uh, last week, I'd say I was very critical uh, of some residents in the city who I felt uh, were not participating in our, in our process. And, you know, I let frustration get in the way and, and, uh, with the statements I made. I do understand people have busy lives, busy schedules. They have personal matters that they must attend to. And that prohibits them from coming and participating uh, at our meetings, even though they do have just as much of an input as any other voter or resident of this city. I understand we have an elderly population. We have families who have to uh, attend to homework with their children, get dinner on the table. So I understand all of those issues. And for that, I do apologize. For being critical again i let emotions get in the way and i do appreciate everyone's involvement those who come down here each week and those who do other things they do that may uh, go unnoticed that may we may not see publicly but on to the main issue tonight that's dealing with the 2013 budget uh, i first want to commend and thank mayor chris doherty and our business administrator ryan mcgowan for participating in tonight's meeting i think their uh, attendance speaks volumes on their commitment to working with this council and moving the city forward and putting the best interests of our taxpayers in mind. And their attendance tonight proved that. For the last two days, I had the privilege of attending the uh, commuter tax hearing in Lackawanna County Court. And it was certainly a very uh, unique experience for me to take part in that process and to listen to both arguments, the city's argument, and obviously the argument from those who oppose the commuter tax. And certainly, we will await to hear the, the judge's decisions on that matter it certainly plays an integral role uh, in the city's part moving forward in the best interest of the residents of this city, whether you support the commuter tax or you don't. And I'm hopeful that a decision will be made shortly. 
Uh, regarding the discussion that took place tonight with the mayor and dealing with the uh, unfunded borrowing, uh, certainly we heard tonight that the, the city will follow through on Judge O'Brien's ruling that to pay back that unfunded debt, uh, we will do so with a 10% tax increase. And I do believe that following a judge's opinion is certainly in the best interest not only of the city, but the taxpayers, out of respect to the court. And I understand a 22% tax increase is what we are looking at tonight in the proposed amendment. And with that in mind, I know a question was posed to the mayor, uh, will that alleviate the burden looking into 2014? And I believe that that would. Um, I also want to th take this time to thank the council and the administration for the past months coming together and working together in the interest of the residents of this city to come up with a plan that works for everyone. As we all know, this past summer in August, things were very, looked pretty bleak. I think it's safe to say we were at, some, at, at times ready to pull the plug and throw in the towel and give up. But be, because of a dedicated and committed group of, of elected leaders of this city, you realize that we had to put political differences aside and we had to come together and make difficult decisions. And that's what took place. Your tireless hard work and effort certainly has paid off. We don't know if this recovery plan is going to prove to be a success in the end. We don't know what's going to happen with this budget. But what we do know is that five elected council members and a mayor, a <coughs> business administrator, a Pennsylvania Economy League, whether you support them or not, all came together. And that's what happened. And that's what had to happen and you had to make these decisions. Certainly there was a lot of back and forth, there were differences, but you put all that aside because you knew one thing. People were at stake, the residents of this city were at stake, and the future of this city was on the line. And you should be commended for all you've done, the Supreme Court ruling, Councilman Loscombe stepping up to the plate with his expertise in that area by cutting that award in half, saving the taxpayers money. Again, saving the taxpayers' money. That's what this is about, is cutting the burden, reducing the burden. Our finance chair, as I've said so many times from this podium, when it comes to finances in this city, I would put Mr. Joyce up against anybody any day of the week with his expertise and the background and the credentials that he carries. And I thank you, Councilman, for all of your hard work, whether it's with your PowerPoint presentations, informing the public of what's going on. It goes back to the openness and transparency that this council pledged back in 2010. And you've exercised that time and time again, and you should be commended for that, and I thank you. Mrs. Evans, as council president, you've time and time again put forth your leadership, and you've put political differences aside, and we're willing to step up to the plate and work with the mayor. And you also should be commended for all the time and effort that you put into this budget-making process, the recovery plan, and all the other issues that we dealt with over, over the summer. You certainly have um, represented the city very well, and I thank you for all your hard work. Attorney Hughes, I, I don't know what's going to happen tonight with the raises, whether you're going to get one or not, but for what it's worth, I want to say thank you to you. I know you've put a lot of time and effort into this, and I know it's been stressful for you, but as a taxpayer and resident of the city, I, I thank you for everything you've done because I know it's, it's not easy. Um, I wouldn't even want to step in your shoes for a day because I, I couldn't even begin to imagine uh, what your jobs are like, but I thank you for everything you've done because you certainly have gone above and beyond, and again, I thank you for that. Uh, you know, to, to many of the doubters that we had for the past few months coming up, stating that we should consider bankruptcy, we've done everything we could to avoid bankruptcy because, as I've said before from this podium, whether you agree with it or not, bankruptcy is not the solution to turning this city around. It's just not, and that's the reality. Bankruptcy only continues to, to increase the burden on the residents of this city by driving tax, tax rates through the roof and, and amounts that the taxpayers simply can't take on right now. But again, thank you for all your work. I, I truly appreciate it as, a, as one resident of this city. And uh, I continue to ask you to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I do think we will turn this around. It won't be easy, as I've said. But I do see a day where there will be a rebirth in the city. And we'll be able to look back to this night knowing that today was the start of uh, revitalizing this city. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank Bob you. Polis. Good evening, Council. Bob Ball at Scranton. Good, Good, evening. Evening. Good evening. Not really going to get into the towing too much. I think I pretty well addressed that last week. These are the guys that are suffering, as I said, and tonight I'll make my same offer I did to them. Anytime they need extra equipment to go do the job, it's available to them. As far as creating little junkyards and stuff like that with the city, I don't think that's an issue. The issue is fairness. 
and looking at it realistically. And council has to do that, and so is the administration. These guys work hard, and they work hard for a living. And when they can't make their payments, they can't just go borrow money, float bonds, pay a high interest rate to get them out of debt. Doesn't work that way. This is the real world they live in. So, gentlemen, I applaud you for showing up tonight. It's about time people came forward and let people really know who the real backbone workers are in this city. And I commend you, and I've worked with each and every one of you over the last 40 some years. So our equipment, and I'll make that statement here and now, is always available to you. And you'll never get outbid, and you'll never get thrown out of here as long as I can help you. Moving on to this, oh Bob, if you find 75 turkeys, send them to St. Lucie's Church for Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> What we're doing here, and getting serious here, I think it's a little problem we have. We have too little, too late. This isn't something that just happened. This is something that's been going on a long time. I totally disagree and would ask council tonight to abandon this commuter tax. It's not good for the city. It's not good for the people. It serves no useful purpose. There were many, many assets in this city that were ignored, could have been explored. We didn't do it. Don't ask the people outside Scranton to clean up our mess. We made it. We have to live with it, and we got to clean it up. Don't ask somebody coming here to Scranton to pay for it. You have the Christmas tree decorations. They're beautiful, great. But we're in the city of Scranton. We're paying for them. We're going to put a commuter tax on people, then let's charge everybody that doesn't live in the city to go in there and look at the lights. It's a business then. Make money. That's just one little item. The way we're going, there is no future. I heard the mayor tonight protect the assets. Come on, mayor, that was a joke tonight. You took three and a half million dollars plus the interest from the golf course and blew it. That didn't belong to the mayor. He had made a commitment it would never be touched. You didn't protect the asset, you gave it away. And what do you got to show for it? The highest budget we ever had? <clears throat> we didn't go forward, we went backwards. We're living in the administration's fantasy vacuum. That's what it is. It's not the real world. That's the real world sitting there. What we have going on here is not the real world. It's an absolute joke. There is no future. What are you going to do? Keep borrowing? You can't borrow to get out of debt. It just doesn't happen. You can't crawl over the pennies to get at a dollar. That's what's happening. You know, we keep going on. The golf course went. The ice box, look at the stupid lease over there, a dollar a year. Half a million dollars, 50000 for a piece of land I offered for. And what did Paul Kelly do? He thumbed his nose at everybody here and won't even produce documents. Yet he cried before the judges, oh, how much the city has done and didn't do. He hasn't done a thing that he should have done. Those are issues that have created where we are. And that's only one little thing. You have the icebox. You had the assets. You have the leachate line. It's now going to take in 2,000 tons of Marcella shale waste that's going to go into the landfill. You could be a host community. You could have put a public service fee across everybody in the city, 1% and brought in millions of dollars. Public service fee, the money could be used to accomplish many, many things, including swimming pools that we blew the money when the golf course went. The interest was to take care of that. So, you know, let's open our eyes. Let's take the blinders off. Let's come out of Alice in Wonderland. Let's deal with reality. You know, I was taught by my uncle many, many years ago when I was a child that if you drop a penny or you see a penny on the floor, bend over and pick it up because if you have 99 cents, you need that penny to make a dollar. And I've lived with that philosophy. However, this city, when they look, they'll drop the penny. No, they'll drop 99 cents and they'll walk over and pick up the penny. And that's what we do in this city. The penny, remember that. That's what makes us grow. That's what puts us somewhere. Thank to uh, put us where we are and ask people to cover our debts is absurd. It really is. It's a mockery. 
of how intelligent people could go borrow, you got the interest, you're going to pay on your debt. You're paying basically credit card interest. How do you expect to pay your debt when you don't even know how you're going to pay the interest? I listened to Paul Kelly. Unfortunately, I couldn't get there to speak as I wanted to because, quite honestly, I was supposed to have a hearing with Judge Thompson yesterday. And he continued it the day before because he was still there. But because I wasn't on the witness list, I couldn't speak. But I can tonight. And I hope my vo voice is heard very loud. This budget is passed. It's more than a nail in the coffin. As I said in the past, it's buying a ticket on the Titanic. And you people have the power to look where you didn't look or knew what was there and have ignored it. Don't ask somebody else to clean up our mess. This is our mess. It's our responsibility. Stop worrying about being politicians, including the mayor, coming in here giving a fancy speech. Where was he for the last eight years? Okay? He wasn't here. He put the city where it is, and we can't ride his coattails down into the mines where we're heading. Thank you. And one more thing. We will have our dinner because I won't be here at the next council meeting. It will be at St. Lucie's. It will be on Christmas Day. And, Bobby, we do have the turkeys. Thank you very much. I'd like to wish us all Merry Christmas and Merry a Happy Christmas. New Year. Thank you. Lee Thank Morgan. You. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think the first thing I have here tonight is that I think it's time for the residents of the city to attempt to separate politics from reality. I spent the last two days watching the hearings um, with the three judge panel, Mazzoni, Thompson, Nealon. Mr. Nealon himself asked about bankruptcy. Um, today coming in and determining you're going to put in uh, the taxes necessary to follow the order from Judge um, O'Brien, well, you were in contempt. You really had no choice, to be quite honest with you, because I really think the, the court had a way to deal with this council if it had to. Um, the 22 percent, that doesn't even address any of the shortfalls in regards to anything to do with the budget. It came up in the hearing that the PEL doesn't see a time when the city can leave distressed sta status because its population base continues to fall. And from what I heard PEL say, they were interested in making sure the bond payers got paid. So I, I really don't see anybody here concerned about the residents. And when we talk about a, a future for the city, do we bankrupt every resident in this city to feed this monster that the political base has created? I honestly believe when you listen to the testimony that was given in court, you find out that the budget's a fallacy. It's short even today. I just uh, have to say that we're not on a road to recovery. It's been alleged that we're $25 million short next year. It also came to, to light that uh, we're paying outrageous amounts of interest, just outrageous. It's almost comical, well, if it wasn't so pathetic, the damage being done to the, rem the remaining residents of this city. And for the political base to slap each other on the back and talk about the great job they've done, you know, the city's attorney, Mr. Kelly, talked about the inability to sell um, properties that were acquired with Project 70 funds. But didn't they sell the Southside Sports Complex? The city tried to skirt around every single thing in this hearing. And it really illustrated the blundering and the mismanagement of this city. It was really a disgrace to sit there and listen to the testimony. In my opinion, the opposing counsel only made one error. They should have requested that the judge close the record so that this, here, this tonight's 
council meeting would have no effect on the testimony that was taken and would seal it. Because, to be honest with you, the commuter tax is really the greatest joke you've done because when that issue came up, they determined that the commuter tax will really only fund 10% of the shortfall. That's testimony in court. People don't lie to judges generally. Generally, they tell them the truth. I mean, I came here and talked about Section 312 and 313 of the Home Rule Charter. We're not going anywhere because the political base in this city refuses to face reality and we can all talk about how great a job we're doing but you know the question came up in court how we can't, went from a city of 130,000 people to 70 and the judges themselves questioned whether the elderly tax base of this city would have the ability to make these taxes so I just don't really understand how we can pat ourselves on the back as we deny all the children growing up in this city a future here. Because bankrupt cities that continue forward, I honestly have to say that I think that this city should throw this budget out. And this city should request that Harrisburg allow this city to file bankruptcy and, and move a petition forward. And why is that? Because the PEL has been here for 21 years and when they say that they're only worried about the bondholders getting paid, and the residents are down the soup kitchen, living in poverty, low-wage jobs. Where do we go? And you know what? It comes a time when you get elected to office where you have to stand up and don't worry about who you make angry in Harrisburg. Because don't forget, Harrisburg exempted themselves from the commuter tax. But we're going to reach outside. And you know what we have to determine? We have to determine whether we're electing leaders or spaghetti dish dinner politicians in this city Thank and you. in this country. Thank you. Is there anyone Thank else you. who cares to address council? How you doing? Tom Hashim from Scranton. I'm a business owner and I'm a property owner. Um, I originally came to, to thank you for uh, your diligent work and, and going what I think was above and beyond just regular civ civil service to really try to solve the um, uh, the impending tax raise on the property taxes, but the mayor thanks you and a couple other people thank you. So um, I'm going to move into another thing that I wanted to talk about, which was the uh, commuter tax. I think that um, from my perspective, I, I can offer a, a unique uh, view on the situation, being that I'm a lifelong city resident and uh, currently I live up in Dalton, so I'm now also a commuter. I'm a business owner and a property owner in Scranton, so I, I sort of see both sides. Um, Nobody likes taxation. Uh, we all pay them and nobody likes them. Uh, but they're a fact of life and it's the only way the government really uh, could, could pay the bills. They, they need to impose taxes. Um, looking at the situation as a business person, I, I drive down from Dalton every day and on a snowy day my streets are cleaned. I, I pull over to, on the side of the road, I have lighted, lighted roads. Uh, I don't get robbed going to my car after work and I realize at the end of the day it's because Scran is providing services and, and maintenance and so on and so forth. So although I don't live in Scranton, if you're earning your living in Scranton, you are part of Scranton. And I think that it's a reasonable expectation to expect that people that are earning their living in Scranton, even if they're living outside of Scranton, contribute to the benefit of the services and maintenance that are provided by the city. Um, you have a lot of hard work and business people here and property owners and I don't think that it's fair to uh, burden everybody that's in the city of Scranton with the whole bill and yet let 20 some thousand people reap the benefits of it that that aren't per se living in the city. So um, that being said, uh, I want to offer my support as a uh, business owner and as a property owner and as a commuter to say I think that 1% is uh, justified and reasonable. I don't, I don't think that it's unreasonable in comparison to uh, passing that cost off on maybe a, a fixed income individual that, uh, that doesn't have the means to pay their property tax raise, I think that it's a reasonable expectation to spread that cost out amongst 20 some thousand people. Um, I, heard, I heard, heard another individual saying that, uh, that this commuter tax only represents 10 percent of the, the, the deficit that you need to cover it. Well, I don't know what school he came from, but my father told me pennies make dollars. 
So it, you're not going to get one clean swoop to solve a problem. It's going to be a, a conglomerate of solutions that add up to the dollar bill. So four pennies here, 10 over there, 20 here. Before you know it, you're at the dollar, right? And that's the way we need to look at it. And I think you guys are doing an excellent job. And uh, as a commuter and a resident and a property owner, I'm supporting that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Eddie Spragley, Citizen Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. Good when evening. I grew up, I watched a lot of cowboy movies. And never, never has come into this meeting that I ever get the impression that white man speaks with forked tongue. And I heard this man speak. How you sit up there straight face was beyond me. Mr. Lascombe, he sit and praise you, but he took away your pension. He gave it to Pontius. Pontius didn't get his pension pulled, but you did. Now, Janet, you said 12%, 12%, 12%. I knew it wasn't going to be. I knew that long ago. And I'd come to this point. In fact, the last time I told you, probably 27 would probably be up there. And it still might go to 27. Because some things ain't going to happen. The nonprofits laughed at you. And they will continue to laugh at you because you don't take action to force them. Whatever action you can, you should have done. I mean, your solutions aren't really helping. We still haven't gotten rid of the authority for the parking authority. They're still there laughing at us. And let's look at this deal where you're going to use the old shuffle game again, selling this piece of real estate to somebody else within the administration. The last time you did that, it cost us a million and a half dollars when you did that with the delinquents. That's where that DSRA money had to come from. That's what we lost. Your budget still isn't realistic. And I don't care, you should look at it more. Well, you don't have much choice, but you should look at it much more, much detail. I told you a long time ago, you gotta watch the pennies to make the dollars. This mayor cost us $40 million. We wouldn't even be talking about a commuter tax if it wasn't for this mayor and his fight with the unions. And then they sit there and say how beautiful the unions were when all the time he wanted to get rid of them. He wanted to cut them way down. He wanted to be the dictator over Manny. I stood and watched him speak. And I, this is the first time I ever said, white man speaks with forked tongue. Never in my life have I heard a politician sit there and spruce sp such garbage out, trying to say he did this and that. I've been here for the last all of his term. I know what he did. And I know how we laughed at the council. Janet, you and Billy did fight them. I'll always say that. First time I met you up there in the line to get the chickens, I told you, what do you plan to do for the city? I've been with you in a lot of budgets when you were knocking heads against the majority and you were in the minority. Twenty twelve percent that you quoted, I knew couldn't last. I knew it was going to go higher, and it still may go higher. Even at twenty-two percent, it still may go, because a lot of the things that are in the budget aren't going to happen, and we know they're not going to happen. We can't paint the city in bright colors when actually there's a cloud over us. We got to pray for sunshine and make sunshine happen. Whatever we take, we're gonna to have to take. I know this. But for this man to sit up there and praise everybody, after f we wouldn't even need a commuter tax if he didn't blow that 40 million fighting the unions. And that's what it is. He's been fighting all along. It was his way or no way. Did the Southside Complex have to go? No. 
but for some reason or other, he wanted to go. And then, as you know, the money filtered away in budgets, filling holes. Now, he promised us a field to replace this outside complex. I'll be long dead before that field ever materiates. The man does speak with forked tongue, and you've got to realize that. Maybe you don't realize it, but I think most of you do realize it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Um, okay, uh, on all of this commuter tax and so forth, I know you people have taken a lot of abuse, both in the paper and the uh, and by certain citizens and outlying communities. And I have a, if I see, ever see another newspaper like this out of the Times. Because I like the paper delivery person, I will pay him two months severance pay based on his profits and tips and discontinue the Scranton time. So Mr. Kelly, beware. You're on thin ice. You're ready to go over the cliff, buddy. And I've uh, probably been a subscriber for about 10 years. Uh, now, on this commuter tax, I mean, I'm not really favorable towards it, but it kind of has to be. And I wish that the people that had the complaints would point out that these tax exempts that are plaguing our city. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Joyce, we have a five or six million dollar annual structural deficit. Is that correct? Um, that's what we did have. Okay. Well, that's what we do have. Uh, or did, and uh, we get about twelve million dollars a year from the uh, from the uh, property tax. Is that about correct? About thirteen million and change. All right, now like multiply that million. times one point five, because thirty percent of our property. So that would be the right equation, right? Then there goes our deficit right there, every year. Our, uh, so people don't care. Uh, on the outlying community, why should I pay for that and so forth? Well, if they don't like being held hostage maybe uh, to a commuter tax, maybe they'd like to uh, speak up to the state and get some uh, equity for us. And uh, Mr. Lewis, I've read about him in a paper once again, Gary Lewis with his consulting. Somewhere, find somewhere else to go, please. Just find somewhere else to go. Bankruptcy is not, <clears throat> is not a solution. We'll just wind up with 200% property tax increase or whatever, and, uh, and somebody from the state running our town that we never voted for and would vote for in a thousand years. And uh, I have to say, once again, on the towing and storage, these people made a lot of sense tonight, and I really really please put that on the table please just table it until more research could be done and i think the research will find that where what where we are right now with the city uh we're better off keeping the public sector public and the private sector private and trying to figure out where we're going to from there there's a lot of savings with the dpw and so forth could be made like with recycling there was an article in the paper uh, about two weeks ago, and they, they have greatly expanded the amount of recyclables that they'll take. So, uh, I mean, I see some people's garbage. When I lived up the country, if I had that much trash in front of my house on Friday morning as my trash pickup, I'd pay 30 or 40 bucks for it to, to have it removed, not, not uh, $180 a year. That's, what, 350 a week. So... Uh, Okay, uh, and uh, if these people uh, really have so many complaints about this commuter tax, then uh, it's time that we start zoning 
any further tax exempts out because I'm not going to call them nonprofits. I, I, you could have a, an institution with somebody getting uh, two or three hundred thousand dollars a year as the uh, a financial officer and calling themselves a, a nonprofit. Well, somebody's making something on the place. And I, I'm very glad for hospitals and so forth. I mean, they saved my life more than once. Uh, but it's uh, it's just a shame. So, uh, and the pilots, uh, I think Mr. Mayor really wants to go. He's the person that's supposed to be doing it, and it sounds like he's, he was in his office not. So uh, let him go ask them. Uh, that's what Pell has directed, and you people tried it, and it certainly didn't work out. You just wound up getting slandered. And uh, don't forget everybody in the audience. Call that, uh, call that uh, representative or politician and tell them, take your trade pact and stuff it, because that's why we're in the condition we're in all over this country. And uh, finally, uh, we have a proposal to go from 65 to 67 on Medicare. Well, uh, the uh, Kaiser Foundation estimated that it would save $5.7 billion a year. The cost shift, $3.7 billion out of pocket for elderly people, $700 million by Medicaid, uh, also $4.5 billion from employers, and Affordable Health Care Act, $2.5 billion, with a total of costing cost shift uh, of $11.4 billion. So, it's time we find some more talented politicians on the federal level. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank Don't forget. You. Bok, bok, bok. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Hey, Chrissy. Chrissy, what's going on? Well, the most a big one, Frank. The most a big one. What do you think, Frank? All yeah, the way tomorrow. You know place. that. Hope they win it tomorrow. Cheer them on. Oh, I hope so. You got the hat on. You got the hat on. Jack has his good luck sure tomorrow, do, Jack. Buddy. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Good evening, Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Um, status of the audit, Mr. Joyce, will we see it this year? I'm hoping that we will. There's still a few attorney letters that have to go out and be received, and then Rossi and Rossi will have the draft <laughs> audit for us. Okay. And if there are no further meetings this year, how will we know that the audit's been released for the public? We have a meeting next week, right? Hmm? Pardon? Doesn't there have to be a public notice of the, uh, of the audit being completed? I'm not sure. Does, oh, okay. Okay. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and with respect to, to the budget, because you know my feelings on the budget and um, that I, I feel revenues are, are overstated. So I really want to stress the need for a monthly cash flow projection for 2013 that we can all follow as the year progresses and not wait until August to find out where we have problems. Um, and do we have, this is off, off the budget for just a minute, but do we have an update on the status of the Spruce Street Bridge uh, repair and reopening? There was, a, there was a proposal, I think, by Mr. Bola saying that it, he had a person who said it could be reopened a lot sooner. Do we, do we have any feedback on that? As far as I know, Mr. Bolas was still in negotiations with his engineer his attorney and the, and PennDOT uh, regarding that, so mm. there's no details uh, let out at this point. Okay, um, back to the budget. Does the $100,000 uh, uh, collection of revenue for cover the fees, cover the salary of two people, including the benefits, burden, and, and the uh, doing the physical safety inspections? Are, are you relating specifically to rental registration? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand you're adding, the budget adds a person, a second person for the rental registrations? It was, it was the belief 
that yes, that it would be a self-sustaining, um, I'll say, operation. And, well, that's and what that a fee the, is supposed to be. And that the expenses yeah. would be covered by the fees and that the revenues that were projected in the budget were above and beyond what those, what those costs would be. Oh. Okay, and how much, do, how, what, what have we collected to date? To date, I'm sorry. To date, I have no idea. Uh, at, since I yeah. last mentioned to you, um, yeah. I do not know what the uh, amounts are. Okay, and with respect to the uh, the storage lot, I I question how many vehicles it would hold, and I because of the the bridge being out, I go up and down South Washington Avenue a lot more. There are always a lot of people parked in that lot. If it's the one immediately behind the um, the police building that's <coughs> currently fenced in, um, so where where would those people go to park? And that parking lot has never, remember they ran out of money when they built that place and they never did anything but put the base layer of asphalt in that rear lot. The finishing lever, the layer was never applied. So um, would we have to be, if we're putting in heavy, heavy duty storage of vehicles, um, would that break down that base that's in there and we'd have another expense of replacing that I mean, they're just all things I think to, that need to be considered because, um, in addition to the comments that I made last week, um, and then will we know the um, the mandate alternatives that you'll be proposing tonight, and will we have a, another chance to comment before you vote? I was sort of hoping that what happened last week would have been followed, and we would have known what was what the changes to the budget were going to be before fourth order, so we could have. Uh, so we could have commented. I, and is the sale leaseback the same as the $25 million bond that's in the January budget, or are they still two separate items? They're currently, or it's currently be, being looked at as a sale leaseback, but I guess you could view them as two separate items. So the sale leaseback will bring in how much revenue then? Um, it was projected in the recovery plan at five million. Five? Yes. Okay. And so we'll have an, is that this year yet then? An additional five million this year coming in? No, it won't be, it wouldn't oh, be this year. Oh, it'll be year. next year? It would be. And, and it's still year. in addition to the $25 million bond in January then? Well, it would or be Or in, in 2013, whenever you. It would be considered a part of that $25 million. Okay. And uh, since Mrs. Evans said the, the bill has been paid for the, um, for the unfunded debt borrowing, I assume that means we have the, the bond and you can now identify who the holder is and what all the terms and conditions are of that bond? Um, at this point, uh, I... I, I would I don't have all of the terms and conditions with me I would have to get those off of the BA um, okay I mean I, I think that's rather important and um, I'm sorry that we don't have the information provided but I'll be looking forward to the amendments uh, and how you're going to cover those mandates did the did PEL get um, a response today or this week I know they, you said they didn't up until the court hearing. Did Pell get a response in regard to what their, exactly? Their December 4th letter asking for the, the responses to the mandates of the revised recovery plan by, mon by this prior Monday. Not as I know of, they didn't get a response to all of the updates that okay. were to be provided. So they'll be presented tonight then. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. My name is Lance Stongy, Sr. Uh, the reason why I'm here is I'd like to lend my support to Bobby Sheridan and the other groups of professionals that uh, he was representing this evening. I strongly suggest that you let the professionals do the job that they've done for many years, and they've done it successfully. I know of no major lawsuits that they've encountered 
and I think it's the smart move to let the people who know the job do the job. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Bob Martin, 420 Adams Avenue. This might be out of text, but I'd like to congratulate the West Grant Falcons. I believe the A, B, and C team going to the national championship. And um, congratulations. I know I've been, I, I was a volunteer at the Lackawanna Little League, and Jack knows this as an announcer at the Little League games and helped with the West Grand Falcons taking the cameras and stuff like that. I was watching them on TV and and they are very excited. I, I, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a national championship team, you know. I believe they're going to Virginia. I think I heard that they're playing tomorrow. I'm not really sure. They are playing tomorrow in Virginia. And I want to mention about Kenny Martin. He's been there over 35 years. And the unique thing about him, he never really had a ch child playing. He's been involved in the C team since the very beginning. And I, I remember Mr. Romano was involved in that C team. And, the unique, and like I said, the unique thing is he usually parents go from one team to another, but he stayed there and he's over 35 years. And I'd like to congratulate Kenny Martin. I, I saw him on TV. And, Great guy, great guy, and uh, and I again I wish to, to, to whatever they can come back with, but I know those kids are excited. I congratulate everybody that does the volunteer work, and uh, I also want to congratulate the Dunmore Bucks, even though I'm a West Sider. Congratulate the Dunmore Bucks; they are playing a team, Claritin. They're six. They've been won 65 games, 62 games in a row. And the unique thing I heard about Claritin, the unique thing about Claritin, every player that's, uh, every team, everyone on a member of the, of the football team is graduating and going to college. But I'll tell you, I wish the best for uh, the Delmore Bucks. And, uh, and just to remind people, I believe the game is at one o'clock tomorrow mm -hmm. on PCN. I believe it's like 180, channel 186. The game is going to be rebroadcast on channel 11, uh, W, Q, and Y, I think at 8 o'clock. They're also going to show the other game before that, where they play Bell, Bellware Antis or something. And uh, I, I congratulate them for them. There's one other thing I want to ask you about. Um, the bridge on West Linden Street. I think I heard the Planning Commission said they, People think they're not doing any work up there, but they are moving communications and moving things up. I, is, is it true that possibly sometime in 2013 that that bridge will be opened up or oh, not? Oh yeah, the anticipation is, is you know, late spring, early summer. The, the oh, tie-up was the yeah. telecommunication lines and approvals there. <clears throat> yeah, because a lot of people are not, don't think that there's anything going on there. But, you know, you got to realize it's just like that bridge down in Taylor where you've you got to move different things in order to you know, get everything going. But again, congratulations to West Grant Falcons and bring home a national championship to Delmar Bucks. And uh, I got to wish everybody, a uh, member of City Council, a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And um, again, I want to mention the attorney use doing a great job and the city clerks and <laughs> doing a great job and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you also. Dave <laughs> Paranis Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I also would like to say good luck to Dunmore Bucks. They're the best team we've had in this area in years and Coach Enzis is one of the best you'll ever, ever find. What a man that guy is. Uh, also about this hearing yesterday in the, the courtroom about the commuter tax, one question was raised like, did Scranton try to raise the wage tax in Scranton? Well, that's, I would hope the judges would know the answer to that without even asking. We pay like 3.3 fourths 
wage tax. It's like second highest in the state. And these surrounding boroughs pay 1%. It was nice to see that man come today who lives out of town in favor of a commuter tax. I had lunch yesterday with Patty Lawler. She's a councilwoman in Clark Summit. And she was very reasonable and very understanding. She and I don't agree on this issue nationally because she's representing the people in Clark Summit to help them, which she should be doing. But she was kind and she was willing to listen. And she felt that all the borough people should get together. Unlike this mayor from Mayfield who charges them with a radical group and they want to keep coming into Scranton that is very controversial and they want to come in and get all our services for free and put the burden on the taxpayers. And then you have all the, the nonprofits scooping up more properties, putting their tax exempt footprints all over the place in the city. How would these other towns, all these boroughs, how would they like it if they had all the hospitals and colleges that we did? And they, and they had all these properties taken from them that were no longer taxable, and those taxpayers in those towns had to take care of that burden. They don't understand because they don't have that. These commuters, they come to Scranton from the time they're born to the time they die for all the services in the city, between the courthouse, marriage license, everything. They come here all the time because this is where everything is. This is the heart of the whole area. And, and like the man from Dalton said, they come in here, use our roads, they use our police. They take it for granted. I mean, I think for as much as they're getting, a little bit wouldn't hurt to contribute. And, and then Gary Lewis, I don't know if people remember his last appearance at City Council. <coughs> the judges should take that into consideration. I don't know if they saw that side of him. But here's a man that doesn't even own a property. And why would he care? He doesn't own property in the city. I just think he likes to be on right here in front of the camera, grandstanding for his consultant firm, get more business. This man doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. Marie Schumacher, due respect, Lee Morgan, Bill Jackowitz, well, not Lee so much, he has, he has a family here, but Marie and Jack, they don't have kids like a lot of these people do. Like, I'm still helping my son from college, and he's 40 years old. And I'm sure many other people you know, have, they have people in their families. Mrs. Evans, you have four kids in college. You, you know the expense. And it never ends. And then you try to set them up in their homes. So we, as parents and, and family members, have much more of a burden than the people that don't have these things. So for them to speak and say, well, let's get the commuter tax, it's not fair. Well, what about what's fair to us in Scranton, who has to handle the burden of everything? Everything, everything, everything. And I have to thank you very much for bringing this tax down as much as you possibly did. And if it's, here's my one question. I understand the taxes may go up, like Mr. Jordy said, and I'm very happy to see he was here at Mr. McGowan. I think that, that speaks highly of him. Uh, so if we make it 22% and the court says no to the commuter tax, we still have that 22%? Because this is what the judges wanted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So if the judges say no to the commuter tax, we still have the 22% because we, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, okay, it's, you know what you're doing, and I trust you with that. And Mr. Bo Mr. Hughes, I'd like to thank you as well for all the work you've done. You, nobody will ever know the work that you've done. And, and people, keep, people keep on saying all the things that have happened in the past. You know what, the past is in the past. I mean, if I was going to go into the past, all the loans that they did, I could sit here about Judy Catelli, Billy Courtright voting for every loan that there was with a smile on his face, and nobody even knew he did it. But we can't change that. We have to move forward, just like you and Mr. Doherty tonight, Ms. Evans. You two have never spoken like you do in the last, like you have in the last couple months, which is nice to see because that proves that you're trying to move the city forward. We can't go back and keep on saying what a mess it is. It is, it is, it is what it is. And that's all there is to it. We have to forget about that. You can't do anything about it. You have to keep working together and go forward. So that's all. I just hope that people sort of understand that the people from the areas outside of town, they do owe us something. They really do. They're absolutely positively. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Yes. Uh, 
Ten years ago, I moved to Scranton. Yeah, you need to state your name, please. Uh, my name is William Hill. Wayne. William Hill. William Hill, thank you. Ten years ago, I moved to uh, Pennsylvania from Jersey City. Um, and I came here to start a brand new life, a better life. Jersey City was starting to become run down. And between the crime that was happening there, I just, it was time for me to leave, move on. Couldn't really make a living there. What I'm seeing here lately and going up and down these streets, I see a lot of for sale signs on houses. Houses are not being able to be sold. I see businesses that got for sale signs <clears throat> closed. They're not coming back. What I'm starting to see here is the same mistakes as what they made in Jersey. The towing businesses, I see people t trying to take that away from them. I also see a lot of other things that can be contributed to this whole subject. There's got to be other ways to make cuts in the budget to save, like the towing companies, bring back businesses back into Scranton. I see a lot of things going on here. It's the same exact mistakes as another place that I lived. And it's a shame. Putting an uh, impound yard behind a, a historical site, I mean, that's not something that I want to go down and see. I want to go down and see trains. I don't want to go down and turn to my left and then see junk cars in place of that. I mean, that's something of a place that you want to go in and say, you know, this is part of my heritage. Scranton has got a lot of historical sites here. It would be a shame to see them ruined. I mean, there's got to be other ways that you can cut the budget to bring up that money and give to people like towing companies, small businesses, a better chance. Because the more and more you take away, the more and more people are going to leave. The more and more people leave, the less taxes people are come actually paying out. I mean, that's all I have to really say about this. Thank you for my, your time and listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Five A motions. Um, at this time, I'd like to call on our finance chair to present all amendments for individual votes. Uh, thereafter, I will call on each of the remaining council members in the established order for their comments or motions. Councilman Joyce, please begin. Mrs. Evans, would these also be measures that were tabled last week for a vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. Everything is included. Okay. Okay. Pass out a copy of all the amendments. I compiled uh, some of the amendments that I made along with um, the amendments that Mr. Rogan made, and I'll read each one of them out singly in the form of making a motion and we could discuss each one individually as uh, I know Mr. McGough suggested um, last week. Oh, no problem. And the first amendment that I'd like to propose is a reduction in expenditures in account 01.011.0078.401.0001 standard salary fire. Sorry, uh, is that in the form of a motion? Yes. Second. On the question? 
Yes, uh, this is the amendment that will reduce the salary of the fire chief and eliminate the pay raise that was provided in the 2013 operating budget submitted on November 15th. Uh, I, I'd just like to comment. I, while, I, while I think that the raise should be reduced, I also believe that the pay for the fire chief is woefully below what is received by others in comparable positions throughout the state and it had been reduced in the past and given the the fact that the court awarded the court awards that were made to um, firemen and policemen um, has raised the salary of I believe over half of the firemen to that they are making more than the fire chief. Um, I, I believe that we should include a small raise or a raise commensurate with the raises that were received by the, the firemen themselves. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to reduce account number 01202000000.4010 standard salary city council by $15,000. Second. On the question. Yes, this amendment will reduce the salary of the council solicitor and eliminate the pay raise that was provided in the 2013 operating budget. Is there anyone else on the question? I just want to say that, like Mr. McGough, in this case I feel that our solicitor has gone well above and beyond the duties and responsibilities of any council solicitor in not only the time that I've been seated on city council but even prior to that I've never seen a council solicitor become involved in uh, tax anticipation notes in taking down an authority in restructuring debt in providing for unfunded debt and at all times he works on behalf of the people of the city of Scranton when the administration is content to accept the offers or the numbers that are presented to us it is this man who conducts the negotiations and says why not why don't we try for the lower figure and he leaves no stone unturned until he accomplishes that for everyone that lives in this city and so if anyone in my opinion deserved a raise it would be attorney Boyd Hughes because I view him as the single most valuable employee that the city of Scranton has and they're damn lucky to have him because they haven't had the likes of him before. And the debt right now would be much bigger. And for all the people that want to say, you know, there, there shouldn't be a commuter tax, or we shouldn't do this, or let's go bankrupt. People have to understand what bankruptcy entails. And what that means is very simply two things huge tax increases over a hundred percent and no one on this council or even the mayor can stop that from happening once the ball starts rolling because the city loses its sovereignty no elected official has any authority in that situation and number two at the same time those taxes are going through the roof for everybody who lives in this city Your public services and your public safety services will be slashed in half, if not more so. 
So when people are upset that a fire station isn't open in their area, I don't know what, sh what people would do when 90% of them would be closed, always. And a fire department would be cut in more than half. And the people who are concerned for their safety in their homes as they travel, you get in an accident, who do you call? You call the police. Someone's breaking into your house, you call the police. Think about all the times in your lives that you've needed to call the police. They wouldn't be coming because there wouldn't be enough of them. And the sad fact of the matter is, in order to avoid bankruptcy and that huge tax increase and the loss of the services you've come to expect and enjoy, something's got to give because all this has to be paid for. And there are mistakes dating back 10 years, a big mess that had to be handled this year because yes, the truth of the matter is the city was this far from bankruptcy. And over there is a man who went to extraordinary measures to make sure this wasn't going to happen. And yet, I can't give him a raise because there's not enough money. And I think we'll count ourselves lucky if he even agrees to stay on. And when you're asking for everything, you also have to ask yourself, how is it going to get paid for? And how many people are going to share that burden? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there anyone else on the question? Yes, I'd like to make a statement, Mrs. Evans. Thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I've enjoyed truth. three years being here uh, with council and working with council. Uh, the fact that I didn't get a raise this year doesn't mean that I won't be here next year. I'm fully committed to council. I'm committed to the city, and I'm committed to see everything through that this council has started three years ago uh, to get the city back on a financial sound footing. And I'll be here even if you cut my salary from $45,000 down. So anyway, I'll be here. Don't worry about me quitting. Make a motion. <laughs> Thank you. I, too, commend you. Solicitor Hughes, and I think uh, Mrs. Evans spoke from her heart, and I think that speech was from all of us here. I think we all feel the same way. And, uh, you know, rather than belabor it, definitely I think uh, Mr. Hughes knows, and uh, he's been dedicated to get us to where we're going, and I thank him for that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Okay. I would like to make an amendment or a motion to make an amendment to um, reduce account number 01.040.00040.4010 standard salary business administration by $20,000. Second. On the question? Yes. This amendment will reduce the salary of the business administrator and finance manager and eliminate the pay raises that were provided in the 2013 operating budget submitted on November 15th. Is there anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I would like to make a motion to amend or to reduce 
account number 01.040.00040.4010, standard salary, business administration by $57,400. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second. Um, I, I just have a question before we proceed. I, I was under the belief that that $57,400 included the raises for the, the two positions plus the additional, plus uh, Mr. Rogan had made a motion to, to remove a position um, that was at $37,400. Oh, okay. The one that I'm making now includes the removal of the position. The, the first one I made was the removal of right, the but raise. the position was only at thirty-seven thousand. Thirty-seven thousand four hundred dollars, not fifty-seven. Well, this is for the removal of two raises and the. Well, we already position. voted on the removal of the raises. Okay. Well, then I, I guess we could make it thirty-seven thousand four hundred just to alleviate any confusion. Or else we, yeah, if, if, we, if we voted on 57, then we'd have to find another 20,000 to remove from that um, area somehow. What would be the procedure then, either vote down the initial amendment or amend the amendment? Why don't you amend the amendment? Okay. I would like to amend my original amendment to reduce. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. On motion. Let me repeat. I'd like to amend my amendment to reduce account number 01.040.00040.4010 standard salary business administration by $37,400. Second. On the question. Yes, uh, this would be the removal of a position in the um, business administrator's office and it was uh, I believe that um, they were very beleaguered over the past year in dealing with the many issues that um, were created uh, or that, that occurred, and I believe that this position would be um, greatly needed in the future in dealing with the budget and the recovery plan. I would just like to make a comment that this is a position in the operating budget that the business administrator will be, or uh, the business administrator's office will be applying for a grant to fund this position. Um, I, I agree with Councilman McGough that the business administrator's office has been hard at work this year and the business administrator has put forth a great effort. And personally, I think that in a typical situation he would deserve a raise as well however not in a cash strap situation however I will be voting no for this amendment because this is a position that we very well could receive grant funding for in the future is there anyone else on the question I would just state for all of the cuts that were many of these were duplicates and my original amendment and Mr. Joyce's as I said last week um, Basically, I'm voting for every single one of the cuts. We need to save money. So that's plain and simple for me. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. You can continue. No, I don't know if you have to say the no's have it and <laughs> the, the no's dies. The no's have it and uh, the motion dies. Okay. I would like to make a motion to amend account number 01.040.00041.4010 standard salary human resources by $10,000. Second. On the question? This amendment will reduce the salary of the HR director and eliminate the pay raise that was provided in the 2013 operating <coughs> budget. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved.
I would like to make a motion to reduce account number 01.060.00000.4201 Professional Services City Controller by $2,500. Second. On the question. Yes. This amendment will reduce professional services in the sit Scranton City Controller's Office to match the amount that the school district is providing for the Scranton Single Tax Office audit. Professional services in this department will now be budgeted at $17,500 if accepted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have been so moved. I would like to make a motion to reduce account number 01.020.0000.4201 Professional Services City Council by $20,000. Second. On the question. What is um, just the question what that would reduce what line item or what? It would um, reduce uh, funding for the court stenographer and it's it basically funds the court stenographer and the audit primarily i would just add i um when looking through both this year's budget and the online budget um from past years i did notice that there was a twenty thousand dollar discrepancy between on last year's proposed um funding for this line item so going back to this funding level brings us back to the, I believe, the 2011 funding. Would it, I guess what I'm asking is, or what I will ask, will it affect our ability to pay for the stenographer and also <laughs> um, to pay for the audit? Yes. I, I did uh, speak with our city clerk about this who um, is responsible for sending in the departmental budget. And we did have problems in 2011 with making timely payments to our court stenographer on time, who I, I could see her typing pretty slow now <laughs> since I said that. But um, anyhow, I will be voting no to cut this amount as I believe it's necessary to ensure that our court stenographer is paid. There's no problems and that our audit's paid on time as or well paid for once completed as well. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, <laughs> What's the oo? I retract my eye, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad, I did it last week. <laughs> those opposed? No. No. Um, the motion dies. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.040.00040.4201 Professional Services Business Administration by $15,000. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, On some of these professional services accounts, I took the liberty to email some department heads. Uh, some got back to me, some didn't, and some I spoke to by phone. And as far as reducing professional services, our business administrator did um, Reply that reducing professional services by $15,000 would make it impossible for him to pay the accountant performing the audit of the back pay award for the fire and police, the actual actuarial study for workers' compensation account, that, and, and the actuarial study that needs to be done for the workers' compensation account on a yearly basis. So for those reasons, I'll, I'll be voting no to this amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Oh, the no's have it and the motion dies. 
I'd like to make a motion to amend account number 01.040.0040.4240 postage and freight business administration by $4,841.93. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, as far as postage and freight is concerned, um, our business administrator did uh, reiterate that postage would be increased next year due to the mailing of rental registration bills. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 The noes have it and the motion dies. I'd like to make a motion to amend or to reduce account number 01.040.0040.4240, dues and subscriptions business administrator by $6,500. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, regarding this uh, specific account, with respect to dues and subscriptions, our business administrator is uh, still discussing with the Pennsylvania League of Cities and Municipalities about a reduced membership for, this, for the year. Uh, he thinks it would be in our best interest to be a member since they can provide a great deal of assistance with a 1% sales tax issue, which the city and county are currently looking at as an alternative source of revenue in 2014 so i'll be voting no for this specific uh amendment i would just say i believe the city was a member of this organization for numerous years and you see what happened over that period of time i don't believe that this is a valid expenditure of taxpayer dollars and i also oppose a one percent sales tax so i have two reasons to support making this cut <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. I'm not quite sure what the vote total was on that. Request I voted yes. Call. I voted yes. Excuse me? Yes. I voted yes. Yes. No. No. And I'm a no, so uh, the motion dies. I'd like to make a motion to amend or to reduce account number 01.040.0040.4290, stationary office supplies, business administrator's office by $3,000. Second. On the question. Yes. Uh, our business administrator, uh, well, he wrote all these responses back <laughs> in an email. And uh, he, said, he replied, at this point of the year, the city has basically no office supplies. We have barely made it through the year with the amount of paper we currently have. Cutting it by $3,000 would ensure that we will not have enough money to pay for paper for the entire year of 2013. So I'll be voting no to this amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Uh, the noes have it and the motion dies. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to reduce account number 01.040.0041.4201 professional services human resources by $30,000. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, as far as the professional service line item in the departmental budget of human resources, it includes the following. Payroll processing charges payable to we pay payroll. This fee varies and is incurred when a payroll is run. An annual membership fee to the Delaware Valley Healthcare Coalition, DVHCC. This fee is $200. Members of the DVHCC are afforded many benefits, included discounted pricing on products and services. Also, this account includes risk management services through CLR Consulting. The fee for this is $2,000 per month. This includes an administrative service fee payable to Millennium Administrators. This fee is $2,326 per month. 
and this also includes the cost of drug and alcohol testing payable to Northeast Occupational Medicine and Concord Incorporated. This testing is a provision of the Department of Public Works, DPW Collective Bargaining Agreement. The fee varies based upon the amount and type of tests administered. Also, fees for arbitrators who preside over heart and lung matters are paid out of this account. These fees vary depending on the arbitrator and can include the arbitrator's daily rate, travel time, and study time. Also, uh, other miscellaneous fees re related to the services provided by the Department of Human Resources are provided out of this account, so I'll be voting no for this specific amendment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 The noes have it and the motion dies. I'd like to make a motion to, um, to reduce account number 01.040.0042.4390 materials and supplies miscellaneous information technology by $5,000. Second. On the question? Yes. Um, I received a reply back from Frank Swintnicki, our IT director, and he states that the materials and supplies account will be used to purchase replacement PCs in 2013. Every desktop and laptop that the city has developed is out of warranty. If any of them break beyond repair, they'll, or if any of them break beyond repair, they'll need to be replaced as the cost of getting replacement parts is often prohibitive. And in many cases, replacement parts are not even available. For example, if a gateway branded PC fails, it has to be replaced as it is impossible to get replacement parts for gateway since the company was bought out by Acer slash MPC and the professional division was done away with. We also have a number of Dell machines deployed. If one of these breaks and needs hardware replacement, it is also often cost prohibitive to buy the replacement parts from Dell. The $10,000 budgeted in that account will buy about 10 replacement machines. He fully expects the need to purchase at least 10 replacement machines in 2013 as they currently have two PCs that could be used as reliable replacements right now. The average cost of the everyday use workstation runs about $750 to $1,200 depending on the spec and just how much of a discount that the city gets. Any new workstation comes with a three-year warranty. He also asks to please keep in mind that they're not buying consumer-grade equipment, they're buying professional-grade equipment that comes with a standard three-year warranty from both Dell and HP Hewlett-Packard. There's a difference between the two. A professional-grade mach machine is meant for the rigors of everyday office use and 24-7 uptime. Buying consumer grade workstations and laptops is just not a good idea. They're a little bit cheaper, but they don't come with the extended warranty and they don't hold up nearly as well over time. Uh, my response, or the response that I received from the IT director, I believe justifies the necessity to keep the amount of funding in place for the materials and supplies account, so I will be voting no on this amendment. Very briefly, um, while I understand the need to, or the want to have computers under warranty, I think the common sense approach that myself and many of you out there take is, if you have a product that works and the warranty expires, you don't go out and get a new one just because the warranty expired. Um, I think it's a, a savings of money. There will be some repairs that need to be made. There's still money in that account. Um, I fully support the cut. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 The noes have it and the motion dies. I'd like to make a motion to amend or to reduce account number 01.040.0043.4201 Professional Services Treasury by $10,000. Second. On the question. Yes. I, uh, I spoke to our treasurer, Mr. Boland. And the professional services in that account are attributed to the printing and mailing of refuse bills. From speaking with the city treasurer, if we cut professional services in his department, we would risk not having all of the refuse bills being able to be printed and mailed. 
So that will definitely prompt me to vote no for this <coughs> amendment. I would just ask, have the, the refuse bills for this year have been sent out and the account hasn't been dried up? So that's why I, I propose making the cut. I, in speaking with uh, the treasurer, he did reiterate that the cost, there would be extra costs uh, with NRS this year as far as the um, printing and mailing of the bills. So that's essentially what's going to prompt me to vote no for this. Mr. Joyce, this is a little bit off topic, but is the treasurer saying that the city will be paying out paying to send out bills for the collection agency? Because I, I know a lot of people have contacted me, they're very upset because they see, receive bills for garbage fees that were paid sometimes before they even owned the property. But is the treasurer saying that the city is going to pay for postage and mailing of a collection agency's bills? Well, we won't be paying directly to NRS, but the cost will be higher um, to print out all of the bills according to our treasurer. That's just what he told me. Okay, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 The noes have it and the motion dies. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.051.0051.4201 professional services lips ad administration by two thousand dollars second on the question nothing on lips administration thank you all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to amend or to reduce account number 01.051.0082.4201 Professional Services Lips Building. Second. By $20,000. Sorry. <laughs> On the question? Yes. Um, as far as professional services for the building account, uh, Director Seitzinger did state, as I know, many services come from professional services and cutting it would be harmful to the employees of the city as well as to the citizens who come to our buildings. For instance, our elevator repair is from the professional services. Losing the elevator that we have in City Hall um, would deem our building non-handicap accessible which in turn would violate state and federal law for public buildings. As it is now, we don't have the money to replace the elevator, so the money in professional services is used for the elevator company to repair and keep it operational, which in turn keeps our building handicap accessible. Also from the professional services account comes a contract for supplies for all, build, all of the buildings. This includes cleaning supplies for all our firehouses, police department, DPW, and city hall. Cutting this would hamper our ability to fulfill our contract and provide supplies to our buildings. This could be very harmful for employees as that would lead to unsanitary conditions in the buildings. Furthermore, professional services is used in our heating contract at City Hall with Siemens. This is an obligation that, we, that must be maintained. So for these reasons, I'm voting no for this amendment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 The noes have it and the motion dies. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.060.0000.4201 professional services law by $15,000. Second. On the question. This would bring the professional services account and law back to the amount that it was at or that it is at this year. Uh, out of this account, it pays for various arbitrator fees, um, member, or, uh, membership to West Law, and also various transcript fees for court proceedings. Mr. Joyce, is, is this $15,000 the salary for Attorney Kelly? 
Because I see the $50,000 on the next line item. Um, I think that might have, that was probably supposed to read standard salary law since I don't see that we voted on that amendment yet. Uh huh. Um, okay, well, there was a $15,000 and a, a, a $50,000 amendment for the professional <laughs> services in law. So let's make these two motions first and then we'll go and but, do the standard salary for law because that, that wouldn't be the correct account number. Yeah, I, I think, but then if, if, if both passed, then it would be a $65,000 cut when the highest proportion right, was Right, the, the next one would have to be $35,000 okay. to That's add fine. on. Did anyone second? Uh, my second. So the first vote would be to cut $15,000 from professional services law, then we'll vote to cut an additional 35000 from professional services law, then we'll vote Just defeat this one. to cut the salary. Correct. Okay. And in the meantime, while we're voting, I'll get the account number for that. I believe I have it, Mr. Joyce. Okay, I have the standard salary account now. I would suggest we vote against this one and then just vote on $50,000 on the next one. Defeat this one rather than having two separate. Well, we might, amounts. there might be support for a $15,000 cut and not a 50, though. Oh, okay. So in that You're case, right. at least I'm sorry. We'll get some of it. So I'm sorry. You're correct. Mr. Joyce, which is mm -hmm. your current amendment? Reducing professional services in the law department by fifteen thousand dollars. Second. Now, that is not the salary cut. That is no. not the salary cut. Or I shouldn't say salary raise. That's not the raise. On the question, anyone else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.060.0000.4201 professional services law by $35,000. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, this, as I said before, pays for our transcript fees, arbitrator costs, core costs, and also uh, fees due with West Law. I think reducing it to the level that they are currently getting this year is prudent and conservative, but I think reducing it by more than that would be taking a risk of, of underfunding the account. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. The noes have it and the motion dies. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.060.0000.4010, standard salary, law department, by $15,000. Second. On the question. Yes, this would be the elimination of the pay raise for the city solicitor provided for in the 2013 budget. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.401.10060.4299 Everhart Museum by $15,000. Second. On the question. Yes, uh, I believe that it's important for the city to um, invest sort of in itself. Uh, the Everhart Museum is one of the um, you know, cultural centers for the city and I believe it's important that we continue to to fund it. I would just state I, I enjoy the Everhart Museum. I go there about once a year. But when you have a city that is broke, we can't afford to be spending money. Um, Fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money but it can be raised privately. And if this amendment does pass I would be happy to help the museum raise the funds privately. 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. No. Okay. So the no's have it, and the motion dies. I make a motion to amend or to reduce account number 01.401.15325.4299 operating transfer to debt service 2012 series C by $200,000. Second. On the question. Please explain. Yes. <laughs> I figured that you would want an explanation. I uh, did speak with Ryan McGowan about this, our business administrator. And he stated that the interest rate for unfunded debt B is not going to be the same as unfunded debt A. It, it will actually be lower. Thus, um, that's why, a, that's why uh, the mayor came in and stated that there would be a 10% tax increase proposed rather than a 12% tax increase to pay for it. Therefore. The amount of unfunded, the amount of the payment for unfunded debt B, would be two hundred, or would be one point five million dollars rather than one point seven million dollars. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it, and so moved. Okay, I make a motion to um, reduce account number 01.310.31295 amusement tax by $100,000. Second. On the question. Yes. Uh, the original figure that was provided in the budget for the amusement tax was based on a 10% amusement tax, and that figure was $200,000. The amusement tax that was passed by City Council is a 5% amusement tax. Therefore, the um, amount of revenue projected to be collected from that tax would be half, being $100,000. And Mr. Joyce, can you tell us why the reduction was made from 10 to 5? Yes, it was believed that uh, there, were some, there was some legis uh, piece of legislation that was passed, um, I'm not sure how many years ago, that stated cities having an amusement tax uh, in place after a certain date could not go over 5%. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to reduce account number 01.331.33165 police towing slash towing fees by $300,000. Second. On the question? Yes. Um, I was going to speak to this uh, during our motions, but I guess it would be appropriate now since it um, is brought in as a motion. Um, I believe that the creating an impound lot for the the city is uh, a bad idea. Um, last week it was talked about that we were um, giving in to special interest. Uh, th this, if this were to be done, it is a special interest. It it applies to only one business in the city or one form of business in the city. So therefore, yes, it is a special interest. Um, and I will admit that uh, among the towers, as people here are um, gentlemen who uh, did support my political campaigns when I ran. And, and, and I, I just want to make that public uh, so that um, people do know that, um, am I friends with some of them? Yes, but I still think that in total, that this is not a good idea. Um, I think it's in the wrong place. And I think that while we're asking local small businessmen to pay more in mercantile taxes, property taxes, and, and all of that, 
at the same time we're trying to take business away from them. Um, I, I just don't think that it is a good idea for supporting um, small businesses and um, I think that it, in the long run it would be detrimental to the city and detrimental to those businesses and to the people who work for them. And I believe that re taking this out of the budget um, would be a prudent thing to do, especially if we are going to increase the real estate, if we are going to entertain another 10% increase in real estate tax, I, I think that we can't afford to remove this as a revenue item from the budget. I would just add, um, and I think Mr. McGuffey said a lot of what I planned on saying, but a couple of the other points that weren't brought up that I brought up last week and that it, when I spoke to many of you that you brought to, to my attention was that, number one, the city can't be a salver. When cars build up on city property, which is what they're going to do, the city cannot just go and bring them to the junkyard. It doesn't work that way. Somebody owns that vehicle, and it's not the city of Scranton. It takes a very long period of time, even for you guys, to move these vehicles. And as a city, we don't have the right, legally, to become a salver. So I envision, as what was mentioned by a few members of the public, that we will have vehicles sitting in a parking lot next to a National Historic Site. It's not the idea of, you know, like it was mentioned before, people want to go see trains at Steamtown. They don't want to go see junk cars. Also, the figures don't add up. From speaking to the 15 companies on the towing list, um, you know, they told me it was around 80 jobs that they received from the city. When you add that up, the storage works out to less than $120,000. And that's spread out amongst 15 companies before any expenses. As it was stated also before, there are certain rules and procedures when a vehicle is involved in a crime. It cannot be a vehicle involved in a crime cannot be left out in the cold, in the rain, in the snow. Police may have to dust for fingerprints. There may have to be, you know, a second search done on the vehicle. From what I understand, they have to be stored inside. I don't know if the city has a place to store them inside. Finally, if, for instance, say the city gets in a few hundred cars that aren't picked up, and I come to get my car, which there's five other cars before it, somebody has to move those vehicles. Now, if they're broken down, how is the city going to move these vehicles without a tow truck? The logical explanation is the city has to buy a tow truck. And I haven't been in the market for one, and I don't think the city should be. I know they're very expensive. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. Although I have a strong belief that this won't work, the idea of it goes against my core philosophy of what government should be involved in. Government should not be in the business of putting business owners out of business. Business owners are being asked to pay more in taxes this year, in mercantile tax, in business privilege taxes, in property tax on their business. Their employees are being asked to pay more in property tax, and they already pay the second highest wage tax in the state. It is not right to go after business owners to provide jobs in this city. It's not the way to balance a budget and frankly, the $300,000 revenue item will not be realized. Could I add one? I'm sorry, I just did one other thing. Um, even though this, this, at this point in time, this is a budget line item. I, I believe that in order to do this, there would have to be enabling legislation. Um, so maybe I'm arguing against myself some, somewhat here, <laughs> but... Um, even if that... If we kill it now, though, there won't be legislation. Correct. Um, so, um, I'll stop. <laughs> I just wanted to add something briefly, and then if there's anyone else who cares to speak. Um, with regard to the additional 10% in the real estate tax, um, bringing it to a total of 22%, that's dedicated tax millage. It can't be used for any purpose other than the repayment of the 2012 unfunded debt. 
so it can't be moved around throughout the budget to make up for a three hundred thousand dollar budget deficit so uh, that would require you to find equal funding elsewhere to balance that out um, in addition when we're talking about um, the increase in the business and mercantile the business privilege and mercantile taxes yes they have been increased to their prior level uh, this council is the one who had decreased them and uh, now they would be returning as I said to the previous level whereas the real estate tax unfortunately cannot say the same thing I would just add um, and, and obviously it is correct that increases in real estate taxes are going to pay off debt but to the taxpayer they're still paying more in taxes you know they get the bill at the end of the year for most of us you know I'm, I'm closing on a house in eight days I'm setting up an escrow account it's very expensive and you see they'll see their mortgage payments go up every month and to them it's not well this is just going to pay off debt which you know I think many of us agree even though we disagree on this issue it was not caused by us it was caused by the mayor they still have to make the payments so when you're asking people to pay more and then you're taking money away from the business owner's pocket at the same time I just don't believe it's right so I will support taking eliminating this line item if I could just say a few things um, just what you just said I mean that's what puts us in a spot here that three hundred thousand dollars would help the taxpayers in this city without raising their taxes I'm not one to put any family out of business you know nobody knows what I've gone through personally in the last couple of years financially I know what it's all about many of you towers out there are personal friends of mine I spoke to to several of you regarding this issue and uh, you know there was a proposal to just bid it out to one person we didn't want to see that we want everybody to have a piece of the pie but we also have to do what's right for everybody in this city we have to generate revenue beyond taxes and uh, that's what we're taxed to do I've, I worked the fire department I worked rescue I ran into many of you there I know you'll shake your heads and stuff like that I know it you know if this passes that you'll be upset with me but I understand that was the case last week anyway it's, it's not going to change things I'm up here for 77,000 people in this city that I have to look at I'm same with the commuters I'm not in favor of the commuter tax I work with a ton of commuters and how do you think I feel every day when they're jabbing me but the way we have to look at it right now is everybody has to share in a pain and maybe we'll be able to do something again that's my personal philosophy I'm not out to take anybody's jobs but we have to look at the whole the city as a whole and and not a certain group and and by keeping the towing we're not towing it's just the storage yards and that's not a done deal yet either we have this hole to fill in the budget and, and as mr. Sheridan stated they have some ideas and he spoke to me about that I haven't heard anything since then but we're willing to sit down and, well, and do something to fill this hole actually I believe uh, I spoke to the mayor about this several times he told me that uh, first meeting was conducted between Corporal Bachman and the towers <laughs> and that there would be an additional meeting and that the mayor was going to take care of this but that the mayor was in agreement that the three hundred thousand dollars cannot be removed from the budget because there is no way in which to replace that money we have just reduced expenditures by two hundred ninety thousand dollars approximately and if if this goes through you know I, I know the mayor may have stated that he's going to try to work it out but if it goes through that money has to be realized somehow if it's taken out along with the cuts that's offsetting I I don't believe that you can really look at this as a reduction in debt service because the debt service is still going to be paid through the dedicated millage increase <laughs> but is there anyone else all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed no no 
Uh, the noes have it, and the motion dies. Make a motion to increase account 01.301.30100 current real estate tax by one million five hundred forty three thousand forty three dollars second on the question um, I, I'm assuming that this is the additional 10 percent yes. um, I, I again I was going to speak to this during motions but uh, um, I, I guess I'll I'll do it now um, I'm in favor of doing this um, I believe that from listening to the testimony that was provided and the questions that were asked by the judges during the recent court hearings on the commuter tax, that one of the things that they were hesitant about was the fact that we had not complied with um, the 10 percent dedicated tax increase. Um, I believe, firmly believe that by doing this that we will in fact have a better chance of realizing the commuter tax uh, which I also support and in addition to that an additional a, a, a tax increase of 22 percent um, works out to approximately ten dollars per month for the average ten dollars a month or less for the 75 percent of the taxpayers in the city and the other 25 if their properties are being assessed at more than that I would be reasonably sure that they could probably pay the increase um, I don't think that this places a great burden on people I, I believe it's something that's necessary and if in fact as the mayor stated and mrs evans had asked if it helps mitigate a 2014 tax increase um, I, it, there's another plus for doing this now and if we didn't realize the commuter tax then the tax increase for 2014 i believe is somewhere around estimated around 44 percent um, I, I believe that this doing this is the most prudent thing we can do at this time all those in favor oh i had some i'm sorry <laughs> go ahead i had a little bit to add tonight as a council member i'm faced with my toughest decision since i've been seated here that decision is whether or not to approve an additional 10 percent tax increase on city residents thus bringing the total tax increase in this year's budget to 22 percent I spent all of Tuesday in court, both as someone who testified for the commuter tax and someone that viewed other witnesses testify, and it was clearly evident from the questions that Judge Nealon, Judge Mazzoni, and Judge Thompson posed that they believed that the court order to have a millage dedication in the 2013 operating budget for the second unfunded debt borrowing was not being followed. The payment for the second unfunded debt borrowing has been paid, however, though it has been paid, the three-judge panel firmly believed that a millage increase related to the unfunded debt should be levied next year as they saw the stipulation of Judge O'Brien's order. As per the recommendation of Mayor Doherty, I'm going to vote yes to include this increase in the 2013 operating budget tonight. Though the recovery plan calls for a 12% tax increase this year, the tax increase will, be need, or will need to be 22% to comply with Judge O'Brien's order in the eyes of the three-judge panel. This was a sticking point with them during the commuter tax hearing. Essentially, they questioned all witnesses about it, and it was a key component of the cross-examination. Without increasing the tax in order to comply with Judge O'Brien's order and thus show respect to the court, it is the collective assumption of Mayor Doherty and some council members that the commuter tax approval would be severely jeopardized. If the commuter tax is not approved, the tax increase would need to be much higher than the original 12% that was proposed in the 2013 operating budget and much higher than the 22% tax increase that is being proposed tonight. 
In order for the city of Scranton to get on the right track fiscally, the commuter tax is a vital component. And if we jeopardize it now by not raising taxes higher in accordance with Judge O'Brien's order, we can face a year where payless paydays and the jeopardization of city services become a glooming reality. The last thing that I want to see is the city face a fiscal cliff by not doing the right thing in the eyes of the three-judge panel. We need them as a city to approve this commuter tax. Without it, we face a large hole. Since the recovery plan calls for a 12% tax increase this year, the 2014 tax increases per the recovery plan will be lower than what was anticipated originally due to the facts that tax fact that taxes would be increased now. Though if approved, there will still be a 22% tax increase, the tax increase this year would still be lower than some of our neighboring cities such as Wilkes-Barre, which is proposing a 30% tax increase, and Hazleton, which is proposing a tax increase of over 80%. I ask that you bear with Council as we are working hard for you. Unfortunately, the decision to raise taxes is not a popular one. However, it's one that had to, has to be made and must be approved. If it is not made and not approved, the commuter tax could be in serious jeopardy. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. Um, before Mr. McGough uh, does his motion, um, there was one that was left out, um, was the property tax rebate for veterans that wasn't included on the list, and also the cuts that were made, which I'm happy there were some, um, I don't see them going anywhere. For instance, and I believe Mr. McGough says around $90,000 if you take out, I did. If, if you don't consider the $200,000 transfer with the debt service, there's $90,000 in cuts that haven't been appropriated elsewhere. So I would like to make, make a motion to appropriate those funds to a, a property tax rebate for veterans. Second. On the question? Uh, just on a question, I think it's a great idea, as I stated last week. Uh, I just want, I'm just wondering how it would be you well, know, set up. Actually, or coordinated. Um, our office did the homework on that, and it turns out that it's already in effect. That, that, that is only for 100% disabled veterans. That mm -hmm. is not for all veterans. And that's already in effect. In the state of Pennsylvania, if you are a 100% disabled veteran, you don't, you don't pay any property taxes. Right. You go through a process with the county and with the state. This would be a small rebate for all veterans, whether they are disabled or whether they are not. I believe that if, if we were to approve this, that it would need some type of enabling legislation yes. um, with the parameters for how the rebate would work. And I do, you know, I, I do think it's a very fine idea. And, you know, certainly veterans have made tremendous sacrifices for this country. But I'm also concerned, for example, about the elderly in our city who are on fixed incomes. And Social Security doesn't rise very much. It doesn't keep pace with their food, their utilities, which are constantly rising, their tax bills, which are now rising. Well, the city, the city is rising at last. The county has uh, quite a record of hefty tax increases, and the school district raises taxes fairly regularly. So um, I guess my concern is that where then is the fairness in it for the elderly, for other disabled people who may not have served the country, but they are disabled? I would just reply by saying I agree with you. I, I wish we could do, we had money for a tax rebate for, you know, elderly, for, you know, lower income folks as well. But I think if there's a small pot of money left over, and that's what this is, these cuts are a very small amount. I'm grateful they passed. If that money has to be appropriated somewhere, who better to give it to than veterans? Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Uh, the noes have it and the motion dies. 
So what happens to the money we cut? Basically, we'll have an overage of revenue over expenditures, which actually, in speaking with Business Administrator McGowan, is, it is permitted to have a surplus. Okay. Well, it's a very meager surplus, but uh, certainly with all of the struggles that the city has faced throughout the year and um, particularly without a commuter tax is going to continue to face next year money I'm sure will be put to its proper use is that all yes thank you councilman Joyce uh, councilman McGough do you have any comments or motions uh, just one last thing to to speak on uh, and that would be the commuter tax um, as I've stated before my reason for supporting the commuter tax uh, hinges on a number of things uh, and, and the first of them has to do with the demographics of the city of Scranton 75 percent of our population is over the age of 60 many of them on limited incomes many of, many of them unable to increase their incomes due to the fact that social security increases and pension increases don't occur very often um, and in addition in listening to the testimony that was provided over the during the commuter tax hearings um, I didn't realize that almost two-thirds of all the workers in the city of Scranton are commuters um, I think they, they said 36,000, approximately 36,000 workers, and over 22,000 of those workers are commuters. Um, these are people who have, who use the city to make money. They use, the, they are in our city um, to provide for their income. And, and in the process of that, they avail themselves of the services that this city provides fire service, police protection, um, medical services, um, streets, paving, lighting, um, plowing, that all of these things are provided to commuters. And while I may agree in some, some instance or to some degree that uh, taxing somebody from outside of the city may be um, somewhat onerous um, I do believe that in the situation in which the city has been placed I, I, I do, do believe that it is a reasonable thing to do and it's a temporary um, thing if approved it would it's it needs to be approved every year it, it is not a continuous tax and um, for that reason I am much very much in favor of uh, the commuter tax and hopefully that what we have done tonight with the tax increase for the um, unfunded debt or the dedicated tax increase that the panel of judges will see fit to um, allow us to impose a commuter tax for 2013 and last thing uh, just a happy holidays to to all even those participating in Festivus which was not mentioned before. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogan, do you have any motions or comments? Yes, very briefly. I made most of the points I wanted to make when we were voting on the amendments. Obviously, I'm very frustrated about much of what transpired this evening. Happy that Mayor Doherty came into council chambers. I think the meeting should have been months ago when the mayor and five members of council could have made a budget instead of the way of the past when the mayor would pick find out that he realizes he only needs three votes to pass a budget, work with three people, and ram it through. I am thoroughly disgusted that my colleagues would not vote for a tax rebate for veterans when there were extra money in the budget that we just made the cuts for. Instead, they choose to have a surplus, which we'll see if that even materializes. You know, I'm really at a loss for words at much of what I saw transpire here tonight. 
I, I'm very frustrated. And I really look forward to the day when we could have five members of council and a mayor that could sit down in a public meeting like this and work these things out before it gets to this point where you have a budget that's due in two days, you have it all hinging on a court through three judges tomorrow. If the city doesn't get the commuter tax, you know, all this was for nothing. You know, there's, there'll be a huge hole in the budget. Mayor Doherty should have been in here earlier. He should have been working with all members of council. Um, I don't have much more to say than that. And I, yeah, Mr. McGough's correct. We also never had a caucus. Um, on the amendments, or, or the amendments, I am glad that Mr. Joyce did include mine, and we, we did give everything an up or down vote. I'm very happy about that. I'm not happy how the votes went, but I am glad that we, we at least did give an up or down vote. But another thing that, that really frustrates me, and this is something that I campaigned against when I ran for council, was the recess. And the council's going to take off one or two weeks again. You're, you're all going to be voting, well not all, but some of you are going to be voting to raise taxes 20% and then taking a, a vacation. Now I know we all do work outside of, of this meeting. You know, I was at a four hour meeting the other day and, and I was glad to be there because it was something I believed in. But it's our duty to be here. And especially after passing a budget that has many mysteries in it, which I think is safe to say, and that is going to affect a lot of people. I think we should be here next week and the following week because the Christmas holiday does not fall on a Thursday. Neither does Christmas Eve. I think we should be here at least to listen to the public and give our input. Um, that being said, I will be opposing the budget as I did the previous two weeks. I am grateful that my colleagues did listen to the public and to myself when it comes to the raises, eliminating them. I am happy about that. Um, that was the most egregious part of the budget. But still, we're, we're going to be putting, possibly putting some companies out of business with this towing stuff. And not only that, and, and I didn't even mention this before with the towing, we're establishing a city, a city yard. It's your cars that are going to be in this lot. If your car breaks down or you're in an accident and you know, it winds up in the city lot, you're going to be paying these fees to the city. I talk to many of, the, many of the towing companies, and when they do storage, they'll cut people a break from time to time. The city can't do that. If we have it in law that the rate is $100 a day, it's $100 a day. There's, there's no way around it. With a private business, they could run their business how they see fit, and they do a good job at it. That's why they've been around for so long. And it's not just the towing industry. It's all businesses in Scranton. We need to support our small businesses. I have talked to so many people in this city who are leaving because the taxes are too high and the government is dysfunctional. Hopefully in the future we'll have a new mayor and we'll get on the right track. But for right now, it's just very frustrating and that's all I have to say tonight. I'd just like to ask, <clears throat> as far as the mayor and the budget process, what would you, ex what would you suggest had been done differently besides a for, public meeting? Well, well, first of all, I suggest that we all should have worked together. Also, there are many things, some of them small, some of them large, that could have been changed. One is OECD. OECD used to pay rent to the city of Scranton. They moved back in-house. And I understand the argument can be made that some people would like that money in there for programs. But when the city was on the verge of bankruptcy, and I believe we still are on the verge of bankruptcy, we could use that rental income. If not rental income, say they were using one-eighth of the building, they could pay one-eighth of the electricity bill with those funds. I think that's a very common sense solution to a small problem, but it's something that could have been included. I also think that cuts need to be made. I know that there were cuts in line items such as um, you know, basically the pens and paper accounts, which there's nothing wrong with that. I voted for 19 cuts tonight, and I sometimes get criticized for voting no a lot. But when it came time to make these cuts, I voted yes on every item. As far as OECD is concerned, when we voted as a council, we cut their administrative costs basically down to the point where they can't afford anything besides their salary. And that was done at the time when they were outside of City Hall. <clears throat> Mr.
Mr. Loscombe, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, <clears throat> I have a couple comments. I do have a motion. I would like to make a motion to amend file of council number 17, 2012, as amended, which was our rental ordinance, as per the following. Number one, in section nine, fees. After the third paragraph, insert any owners who have paid their 2012 annual rental registration fee and annual permit fee after August 31st, 2012, shall receive a six month credit toward their 2013 annual rental registration fee and annual permit fee. Second. 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 On the question. Uh, just a clarification that uh, uh, file of council number 17, 2012 is the rental registration um, ordinance. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that what this will do is that it, for those who had um, complied with the rental registration in 2012, that they are going to be given a credit towards 2013. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Um, just uh, Mr. Rogan just, just made a comment about uh, uh, Christmas week taking that, that night off uh, for the public to speak on the budget, stuff like that. Well, we had a public hearing for the public to speak on the budget, and I don't think more than a handful showed up. Well, I mean, the, the timing of that meeting was difficult. Was even difficult for me. I was at five o'clock on a, on a work day. A lot I, of people may be away on, on a holiday day. week. That's the only one we're looking at. And 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 you know, I don't want to get into it or anything like this. But but you know, there's. I think you missed a lot of meetings this year. I had surgery, Mr. Lascombe. And before that surgery, I had the best attendance record out of anyone on this board. And you could go and check on that. I'm just state making a statement, that's all. I'm not looking for a fight. I, I was, I was in the hospital for two weeks, you know, nearly two weeks. I don't know what, what more I could do about that. Well, I apologize. I'm, I'm glad you're, okay. you're well, but, you know, things happen. And I don't think, uh, you know, the summer vacation or a Christmas vacation, when we're all in contact, uh, or if a meeting, as, as Mrs. Evans stated, if the, a meeting needs to be called, it'll be called and we'll be here. But, uh, you know, basically that's, that's the way I look at it. I do want to make another uh, announcement, too, that was brought up last week about the smoke detector program by the fire department. Uh, I did happen to see it on TV, getting good exposure. They're getting around with quite a few. I hope we still have some left. Uh, but if anyone is in need of smoke detectors in their home, this is a free program and they are installed by the firefighters. So you could call Sean Flynn, he's the fire prevention officer at 348-4164 extension 1. Or his email address is S, as in Sean, Flynn, F-L-Y-N-N -N, at scrantonpa.gov. And it's also on the city's website, www.scrantonpa.gov. And, you know, as, as you saw in the news recently, we've had a Christmas tree fire down the line. Um, I think a, a wood stove just uh, caused a major fire down the line also. This is the season. So if you know anybody that needs a smoke detector, and these, these detectors, I believe, have 10-year batteries. So you know, they're good for 10 years without having to change the battery on an annual basis. I, I would like to congratulate also, it was mentioned earlier, the Westside Falcons A and C team. They're going to Virginia tomorrow to play in what's basically the Super Bowl of, of, uh, of their league. So I would like to wish them good luck in representing Scranton. And also our neighbors, Dunmore on their game tomorrow. Uh, they're representing this whole area and I would like to wish them good luck. And just briefly, I would like to go back to some of the votes. It's not easy being up here. It's, you can't please everyone. You know, I often said I could walk down the street handing out $100 bills to everyone. 
and two or three people are going to complain to me that theirs had a wrinkle in it. And that's just a fact of life of being here. We agree on some things, we don't agree on other things. But the one thing that we agree on, for the most part, is we're put in a position here to get this city back on its feet. We know what happened in the past. We've been bringing that up for a long time. And we weren't getting anywhere. Finally, we've worked together with the administration. And again, I don't agree with 95% of what the administration does or stands for. But I think we're all on the same page knowing we have to straighten this city out and do what we have to do. People tout bankruptcy. Well, check what happened in other cities with bankruptcy. We're trying to keep your taxes down. Again, it's spreading the pain to a lot of people. There is a lot of pain out there. I don't think anybody in this area has been spared pain from anything, from the economy, from jobs, from, from different things. You know, I've got well over a half a century on this earth, and I've seen a lot. And I make the decisions that I feel are in the best interests of the majority. I apologize if some people feel offended or think it's a personal situation, and that's not the case. I have personal friends who I'm dealing with on a lot of these issues. And it's personally hurt me financially, it's personally hurt me being involved here in other positions. I've had family members lose their jobs because of my position here. So I know what it is. I know what it's about. But I can't sit here and, and have to make a decision based on one group when I have to represent thousands more. And I know they're stating the city isn't going to make any money or anything on it like that, but, you know, if that was the case, I don't think they'd be fighting so hard. We're fighting to keep you guys involved in this, and I want to continue the conversation. This is not a done deal, but the reaction we've gotten is, is, is not too good. You know, we want to work with you. We know your residents and taxpayers and business people. But I'm not going to sit here and say yes and no to special groups and this and that because I've been asked to. I have to make my decisions based on what a lot of people that I run into tell me about. They may not be the right decisions all the time, but I have to live with them. But if, if, if any of you gentlemen are offended, I apologize, but I have to do my job here to represent the majority of the taxpayers in this city. You've sat here all, all night. It's been a long evening for you. And you've heard the problems that we're facing in this city. And if we don't turn it around and, 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 I, and incentives like this are going to help us. A few bucks here and there, you heard it, pennies add up. That's the only way we're going to get out of this. So we're just asking for your help for a bit. We're not trying to take anything away from you. Again, if you feel that way, I apologize, but, you know, I'm taxed with having to make a decision here that affects a lot of people. I've seen a lot behind the scenes of, of where we're at, why, we're, why we are where we're at, and if we didn't work hard, and, and again, I can't say we, I, I would have to say our finance chair, our president, and our solicitor, along with the staff in the office, have worked tires, tirelessly and relentlessly to get this budget together and to try and straighten our finances. And, you know, I'm not apologizing for trying to do that, but I am apologizing if anyone is offended, but I have to do what I was elected to do here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to quickly add to that, um, as I mentioned earlier on the topic of, of uh, the towers, the mayor has indicated to me on more than one occasion that he is going to be sitting down with you and working on this situation with you. And if the uh, meager surplus we have has to be used in that respect toward that $300,000, then 
council will not stand in its way. Now, good evening, friends. According to the City of Scranton's Home Rule Charter, Article 9, Budget and Fiscal Matters, Section 905, Council Action on Budget, as well as the Administrative Code. Pardon? <laughs> no, <laughs> Councilman Rogan uh, uh, signified that there was a motion that I was going to make, and that I'm just going to do it in seventh order. It's on an agenda item. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the council must adopt an annual budget by no later than December 15th of the fiscal year currently ending. If council fails to adopt a budget by December 15th, then the mayor's proposed budget shall become the official budget for the city for the ensuing fiscal year. Thus, city council has no choice but to take its final vote during this meeting particularly since no additional meeting can be advertised 24 hours in advance and still meet the budgetary deadline set by the Home Rule Charter. If Council does not vote on this budget tonight or votes down this budget due to the uncertainty of the commuter tax or any other reason, then any and all amendments which Council approved tonight for example, elimination of raises for six employees will not occur, and the mayor's proposed budget would take effect without amendment. Had a decision been rendered by the judges on Wednesday, council would have had the ability to postpone tonight's meeting and to advertise a rescheduled meeting for December 14th or 15th. Absent a decision from the judges, and in order to comply with the Home Rule Charter, Council must take its final vote on the 2013 operating budget this evening. It seems that the judges may announce their decision in the very near future. And should they deny our city's request for a temporary commuter tax, it is then incumbent on the mayor as the executive officer to address and make recommendations to minimize the $2.5 million budgetary deficit according to Article 9, Section 909 of the Home Rule Charter. Further, in 2010, Judge Mazzoni ruled that City Council cannot amend the operating budget following adoption. Therefore, any additional amendments following tonight's meeting must come from the Mayor and be submitted to City Council in the form of legislation. It has been a very difficult year for our city, arguably the most difficult in its history. The financial mistakes of the past 10 years came home to roost in 2012. And through a combined tremendous effort on the part of the mayor, his administration, a majority of city council members, our city clerk, council staff members, city and council solicitors, and the unions, Scranton successfully avoided bankruptcy and public safety and services remained intact. As a city, we have taken all possible measures to provide for a 2013 balanced budget and to begin the process of returning to sound financial footing. Although the 2013 debt payment for the city's second unfunded debt borrowing has been paid, at the mayor's request, we will entertain, well, we did entertain a motion tonight to increase tax millage dedicated solely to payment of the second unfunded debt in 2013 rather than in 2014 to comply with the judge's order early and to satisfy any doubts or questions regarding repayment of this debt that the three judges who will decide our commuter tax case may have. After having been presented with the naked financial facts of our seriously wounded city and the myriad of actions taken to address our critical problems, we can only hope and pray that the judges will decide to help Scranton and its people. 
State government used this city as its test case, its guinea pig for Act 47 versus Act 111, and led it down the legal path to the Supreme Court award of approximately $34 million against the city. But they refused to provide financial assistance toward payment of that award. The large nonprofits, unlike their counterparts in other struggling cities across Pennsylvania and this country, ignore all requests for fair share contributions to their host city of Scranton, simply because they can, while state laws protect them. At the same time, however, they continue to increase their footprints while growing the number of tax-exempt properties within our city limits. The towers oppose a city-owned storage yard, and naturally, because they don't want their profit lines affected. Commuters, some of whom have county, school district, state, federal government, and professional jobs here in Scranton, believe that they do not need to contribute their fair share. In fact, more people who reside in the surrounding areas are employed by government and business in Scranton than Scrantonians. Further, they will not all pay an additional 1%. The amount will be determined in coordination with the wage taxes paid to their host boroughs and townships. Some may pay less and some may pay nothing additional. Even the Chamber of Commerce weighed in against helping Scranton. They all appear to believe that you who live in Scranton, you alone should bear 100% of the financial burden to make up for what they refuse to do. Now, it's said that God helps them who help themselves. At the end of the day, Scranton has done all it can to help itself. And now we can only hope that the judges will recognize this and will decide to help our people as well. Finally, I have one citizen's request for the week and a report on one request that has been addressed for Mr. Dombrowski, who asked for help during a recent council meeting. Uh, the first is the request after the water company replaced water pipes in the 600 block of North Bromley Avenue. It hired a contractor to pave the street. However, it appears that the paving created a hazardous condition since the road was not restored to its previous level. Rather, the paving company created a depressed area in the road in front of 615 North Bromley Avenue. Living in this home is a handicapped young child who requires feeding tubes, which are overseen by visiting nurses. Should this sweet child ever experience a serious health emergency during the winter months, an ambulance could have difficulty responding as quickly as necessary due to the ice that forms in the street in front of this home and on its sidewalks. During rainfall events, this same area of the road floods and the water runoff lands on the sidewalks. Now, the homeowner contacted the parties involved in the creation of this safety hazard, but they have refused to correct it. Neighbors are very concerned and state that it's a miracle that a serious accident hasn't occurred to date. The paving occurred within the time deadline for appropriate road restoration, and City Council urgently requests that this problem is addressed immediately. And finally, I'd like to read the letter I received in response to a neighborhood problem reported by Mr. Dombrowski. And he has been, I believe, trying to have this addressed for years. Uh, this comes from Michael Troianello. Uh, it is going to Ms. Garcia. 
According to records of the tax assessor, you are the owner or agent of the property located at 1321 Froud Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. On Friday, December 7, 2012, I observed the apparent violation of applicable land use regulations on your property, specifically construction company operations with construction equipment and vehicle storage in an R1 zone. These activities are a violation of Section 306B and 604.B.5 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Scranton, File of Council Number 74 of 1993. On behalf of the City, I hereby order you to remove the violations within five days upon receipt of this order. If you do not take the requested action or make other arrangements with this office within five days, we will begin formal enforcement action. Enforcement action may include civil penalties, administrative remedies such as denial or revocation of city permits and licenses, criminal, municipal court proceedings, and or an action for an injunction or other court order directing the elimination of the violation. If you have any doubts about your rights or obligations under the city code, please contact an attorney of your choice. If you cannot afford an attorney, the Northeast Pennsylvania Legal Services can be contacted. Any person or firm or corporation which deems itself wrong by any order of the zoning officials shall have the right to file a written appeal to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Failure to appeal this order is considered an admission of guilt under the Pennsylvania Municipalities Act. This is the only letter you will receive. Your next communication from us will involve formal enforcement action. I await your reply. Michael J. Wallace, Zoning, Court, Zoning Code Enforcement Officer. And I am very glad to see that at long last, the city is doing its due diligence and correcting a problem for the homeowners and neighbors of that area. And that's it. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 80, 2012, an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of a $14 million principal amount, tax anticipation note of the city of Scranton known as TAN series 2013A, awarded to Amalgamated Bank, determining the form and term of said note, awarding said note, authorizing and directing the filing of certain documents and directing the proper officials of the City of Scranton to take any and all other actions as may be required in connection with the issuance of said note. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7A. For consideration, oh, excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 6A to 7th order for final passage. So moved. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7th order, 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, File of Council Number 76, 2012, an ordinance providing for the regulation and control of stormwater management in the City of Scranton for the Lackawanna River, Shed, River Watershed pursuant to Pennsylvania's Stormwater Management Act, Act 167, as amended, by providing for the approval of stormwater plans, providing standards and methodologies for the design of stormwater controls, the administration of this ordinance by the City of Scranton and penalties for the violation of this ordinance. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 77, 2012, appropriating funds for the expenses of the City Government for the period commencing on the first day of January 2013 to and including December 31, 2013, 
by the adoption of the general city operating budget for the year 2013. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7B as amended. Second. On the question? Yes. You know, during motions, I, I know that Mr. Rogan stated that he was frustrated. He was frustrated about the tax increase. He was frustrated about the lack of cuts. He was frustrated that we didn't do the budget in plain public meeting. But you know what? Sometimes I, 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 I sit back and I think, you know what, I'm frustrated too, because no one did as much work on this budget, last year's budget, or the budget before that as me. I met with the mayor numerous times. I met with the business administrator. And you know what? At this point, I think that all council members have access to email, have access to a phone. If you don't like the way something is going, I just suggest instead of being frustrated about it, do something about it. Mr. Joyce, I would just, I, I hope you didn't get the impression that it, I was saying you didn't do a lot of work on it, because I know you did the most. There's no question about that. In the last two years, and I voted with you the last two years, because I agreed with it. Um, and I did. I put up my amendments, and most of them were voted down. So, but I hope you weren't getting that I was insinuating that you weren't, you know, doing a lot of work on it. That wasn't what I was getting at. And I, just just listening to what you had to say, though, uh, because I wasn't in here uh, for your motions. I don't know of. <coughs> any government body that develops its budget publicly. Maybe that's why all governments are broke. <laughs> Maybe, but you know, from the federal government on down, that doesn't happen. But it does take many, many people to put together a budget and everyone had the same opportunities. Some chose to take them, some did not. Roll call, please. Yes. No. Yes. 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 I hereby declare item 7B as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of council number 78, 2012, approving fee schedule for delinquent tax searches, delinquent and current refuse searches, and lien slash condemnation searches. I make a motion to amend item 7C as per the following. In the now therefore clause, after the number one, insert delinquent. After the number two, insert delinquent. Number two, in section number one on the third line, delete city treasurer and insert authorized collector of delinquent real estate taxes and delinquent refuse fees. Second. On the question, I know that um, these changes were requested by the city treasurer uh, in order to make the legislation clearer and the collection of it more efficient. All those in favor of the motion to amend item 7C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 70. Excuse me. No, we just did the moment. We have to. Hmm? What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7C. As amended. As amended. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of council number 79, 2012, repealing all prior ordinances regarding fines to be imposed for police and fire departments' responses to false alarms in the city. 
establishing fines to be imposed for the activation of an alarm device which is determined to be false alarm by the police department or fire department, authorizing the administration and enforcement of said fines and prescribing penalties for violations of this ordinance. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Public Safety? This chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. At this time, would anyone like to address council on item 7E, formerly 6A? This has to do with the borrowing, I presume, right? This is for the tax the anticipation note for Right, it. the borrowing. Uh, I read some of it. I don't like how it was written. All it is is a piecemeal deal. They said it was around 5%, I believe, that we're going to pay on this piecemeal deal. In other words, you ain't getting $14 million. You're getting X amount of dollars until we pay so much and then X amount of dollars do we pay so much, X amount of dollars do we pay so much. All it is is more or less like as if you build a house with the bank. You, as you build a house, you get paid for so much. As you build a little more, you get paid for much. As you build a little more, you get paid for much. This is really, really terrible that we're in a position where they have to give us piecemeal because they're afraid we're going to go bankrupt on them before we pay it off. I'm sorry we have to do it that way, but I guess you're stuck with it. At least I understand why you're stuck with it, because I can add one and one and get two, and not like everyone else did for years and years who got three out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Spiraglia. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Craig? 7E, formerly 6A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 80, 2012, authorizing the issuance and sale of a $14 million principal amount tax anticipation note of the City of Scranton, known as Tax Series 2013A, awarded to Amalgamated Bank, determining the form and term of said note, awarding said note, authorizing and directing the filing of certain documents and directing the proper officials of the City of Scranton to take any and all other actions as may be required in connection with the issuance of said note. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of Item 70. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lascombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Merry Christmas, all. This motion, or <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. For more than a decade, CT programs have been undervalued, very much so. Um, every year we've had to fight for appropriation funding at the federal level. Currently, uh, the proposed, there is a proposed level funding uh, for the Perkins program, the Carl Perkins program, and that's, uh, and that's a good start. But uh, additional investments, I, I think, would be strategic, given the obvious skills gap, the amount of unemployment, the amount of underemployment. Uh, what better pathway uh, using those programs is for education to uh, to returning people to be an active participant